Uh, I would like to just propose a post. Uh, excuse <clears throat> me. I'd like to propose a toast here. <laughs> oh, propose a post. A mac. This is a, a. Are you drunk? A macro toast. <laughs> I've definitely had some champagne. <laughs> that was dope. I've had some champagne. I would like to produce. I would like to produce a toast. <laughs> are, you, are you drunk, <laughs> oh <my> bro? <laughs> I had so I had a little bit of champagne Yo. before we started. Listen, Yo, today is a celebration, drunk? Billy. You shut the fuck up right now. <laughs> It's a celebration day. I've worked for this day, something Billy wouldn't know about, for 25 years. And it's Whoa. finally happening. Dan Snyder is selling the Washington Commanders. He's hired Bank of America, and he is no longer going to own the team in short order, I, I am hearing. Um, this is just a beautiful day. It's a day of hope. It's a day of reconciliation for the Washington, D.C. area. And we will never forget what Dan Snyder did to our community. And how he destroyed a very important part of it and just pissed all over the ashes of it for 25 years. And now the bitch is gone. And I said earlier, I hope he dies, but I don't hope that he dies anymore. I hope that he lives and I hope that he sees how happy people are without him. And I hope that he sees how much this team can mean to the community. I hope he sees everybody happy and enjoying the fact that he's no longer there. And then I hope also the city of Washington, D.C. lets the new owner of the commanders build a stadium right on RFK Stadium's old site in the heart of Washington, D.C., and Dan Snyder with his broke-ass bitch self and his wife are sitting on the sidelines and crying, and they drown to death in their own tears. That's what I hope. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. I, Damn, okay. I love you guys. Prost. Do you have um, a top three of potential uh, suitors you're you're looking at? Yeah. Uh, number yeah. one is Real anyway. quick. Real, we got we to gotta talk about that toast real quick. Huh? That was a long-ass toast. Couldn't keep my cup up. <laughs> Secondly, I rambled a little bit. I know you don't like this nigga, but like, is there is like a is there like a personal element to it? Because like that, you kind of you kind of you kind of went off on it's like he did he did he. I'll be honest with you. Up on your lady or something. I'll be honest with you, Arian. Growing up in Washington D.C., the Washington Redskins at the time was a very big deal. People don't realize it now because it's things have changed a lot in that city since he's taken over the team. But it was the focus of the, of the entire city during football season, and even in the off season, like people, everybody would be walking around wearing burgundy and gold all the time. People would not go out on Sundays between one and five o'clock because they were at home. Everybody was at home watching this team play, and it was actually a very big part of the community, and it it did bring people together. It actually meant something to a lot of people. And then he came and took it over and utterly destroyed it. And it, it there is like a big hole in DC because of what he did. I'm not I'm not exaggerating that at all. Like it was a real thing, and he just he destroyed it because uh, through a mix of arrogance and um, ineptitude and just being a bad guy, he destroyed all of it. And there are people in DC that feel more strongly about him than I do. And I'm just glad. And okay, so that's that's one side of the story. The other side of the story is also that he is a creep and a serial abuser. And his comeuppance and just deserves finally caught up with him through years of acting like a dickhead all the time. So um, he's a bad person. And my my biggest hope is that whoever takes over the team is just I, it, I hope that this person wins immediately right in Dan Snyder's face. That's what I hope. I want nothing but well, the worst things thank, to happen. Thank you, man. Thank you for sharing that, man. Thank you. Yeah, I've I've been where you're at. And let me just tell you, it gets better. Thank you. Thank you. It, it gets better. So I, it'd be it'd be easier to name the people that I don't want to buy the team. I hope it becomes a publicly traded company. That would be that would be something. Is that the first? Would that be the first uh, sports organization that was a publicly traded company? Uh, the Green Bay Packers. I know that's shares. not really. I'm an owner of the Packers. <laughs> I don't know if that's but like I, I, wanna... I will sell my share in the Green Bay Packers if it means I can get into the Washington football team, whatever it's going to be called, ownership group. I like. I want to see like a stock ticker and see how that affects how the teams run. Yeah, I think it would be bad. Like you, so, they'd be they'd be maximizing profits for shareholders. Yeah, but would would making the team better maximize profits for shareholders? I think ideally, I want a rich person that lucked into money somehow and just wants to win because they love sports. That's what I want. Besides that, like it could be anybody as long as it's not Dan Snyder. It could Billy brought up Putin earlier. I never what? Oh, you didn't? Well, then somebody else did. I didn't bring up Putin. Okay, well somebody else brought up Putin. I think I brought up I think you did the other day. Well, Putin had been brought up to me. You were like I'd rather have Putin. Oh no, I, yeah. I brought up Livtor. 
I brought up Saudi money. That would be tricky. That would be that would be a tricky bit of mental gymnastics that I would have to play. But if if MBS and the public investment fund of Saudi Arabia purchased the team. <sighs> Listen, Newcastle's playing pretty well right now. Yeah, that's true. I'd have to think about They're that. Top one. four. I'd have to think about that one. I'm gonna say no, but maybe. They might be worse than Snyder, maybe. They both have the exact same feelings towards the Washington Post. Get some good free agents in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get some great free agents. Dude, we would win so much. Just that jet. They would imagine fly if it was a jet. It, salary cap kind of fucks you, but if it was baseball, no, you just no, get no. everybody. Salad they, they don't listen to salary cap. They drop off bags of money at your door. Yeah, they send yeah, they probably they send a, a falcon. Oh, did we they send a falcon with a sack of like the Lindale White walk, walk into your apartment and you find a bag full of however much money yeah they just send uh barrels of oil crude oil yeah Un <laughs> with shrink wrapped bricks of cash inside like in breaking and bad oil. when they when they put that yeah and oil and you can sell all the oil that you <laughs> the, uh, uh the un what's it called unrefined oil crude oil which is really weird it's like mud and it's so like petroleum products so like vaseline mm -hmm. is like Crude oil is the consistency of like Vaseline. That's yeah. something I always found really cool. So like during an oil spill, if you went to the to the water and picked up a big thing of goop, mm -hmm. just just like aged dinosaur. Yeah, you. I wonder if they could just give you a dinosaur skeleton. If they were, if a, if MBS wanted to recruit Billy to just be a a simp for Saudi Arabia. I think all you'd have to do is just be like, "Hey, I will give you, I will give you a Tyrannosaurus Rex." Yeah, well, a Tyrannosaurus Rex skull would be pretty cool. Yeah, I would settle for a replica, even. Okay, I can make you. Well, anyone can, can do that. No, but like a big one. Okay, like I think like, how much did that probably Nicholas be? What, like five thousand dollars. Nicholas yeah, Cage maybe. has a real one. I think he bought it for a hundred million. And so you would be basically a slave to anybody that gave you, uh, you a giant replica T Rex skull. We can like three D print that. I bet. No, but I want like actual size. I, I you can like three D print a lot of things. Oh, he he. Nicholas Cage agrees to return Tyrannosaurus skull to Mongolia. Wait, I'm oh, finding he... I'm finding one on Etsy for two hundred dollars. <laughs> what? <laughs> Full size? I'm looking that up right now. He. Oh my God, this guy. So a Tyrannosaurus skull is only a quarter million dollars. A real one? Yeah. That's still a lot of money. I'm yeah, but I was only, only a quarter million. I was expecting at bones. least a million. <laughs> Billy, just um, do me a favor. Don't buy anything because I I know what I'm going to get you for your next bonus. Okay. <laughs> Full size. <laughs> that, that's that's size so shit. that's so Billy. <laughs> Yo, I just you got the pennies on, son. Yeah. You like these? You got the pennies. Shout out to you, man. You went and got them shits. It's a big moment for you, man. I got the pennies. I, 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 I don't know how you feeling, man. I'm feeling great. I'm feeling really good today, Aaron. This is like this is probably the happiest that I've been in a, a very long time. I have been able to stop smiling. This has been just. I'm glad that I get to share it with my friends. What's better, caps, Stanley Cup, or this? Caps, caps. I, I had that conversation earlier. It goes cap, Stanley Cup, one in terms of sports memories. Uh, in in the last let's say thirty years, World for Series me. two, I guess. Uh, this is number two, World Series three. This is better to me than the World Series. I I cuz like the Nats see that. I I I love the Nats and I grew up going to the Nats to a certain extent, like not really growing up going to the games, but once I went to college, then they moved to DC and then I became a Nats fan because they started in DC in what 2004, something like that. I think. Yeah. Um so at that point I became a Nats fan, but it's not like when I was a kid I was following the team and going to the games like I was with the Caps. So this is yeah, this is number two for me. This is the second best sports memory that I have in terms of teams that I root for. Where were you when you found out? I was, uh, this is a true story. I was in the gym, not to brag. I was working out. It's arms day. And I'm doing I'm doing the lat pull downs, right? Getting a nice mix of my lats, my biceps, my forearms to a certain extent, some of the shoulder muscles, some of those muscle groups. And... Uh, I saw a notification on my phone and it was a tweet from the Dan Snyder yacht tracker Instagram account mm. that tweeted at me. And it was a link to this, this news article and I opened it up and I thought it was an old article that had been like debunked or something. And then I checked my timeline and then all of a sudden Avery sends me a, a text being like, yo, I think this is happening. 
And uh, man, I've just been, I, I, I cried in the cab on the way to work. <laughs> I did. I had not, not ashamed to admit it. I cried a little bit. So I, I put my sunglasses on and then took a picture. So people couldn't see me crying. Um, and my eyes were just like a little bit red and like a, a small, small tear. And then some, but some dude saw that picture and was like, look at this clown wearing a seatbelt in a cab. And I was what? like, I didn't know that those people existed. Like the seatbelt shamers. Yeah. And so like, especially in a cab. Yeah. Have you seen cabs like, drive? If I get into an accident, I'm just going to fucking racist. sack. I'm going to. That's what that. How is that racist? <laughs> how is that racist? Please explain to me how that is racist. I think it's racist cabs, on you for assuming cabs, the cab drivers cabs are white. for hundreds it of is. years. My grandfather was, just, was a yo, cab yo, driver yo, yo, at yo, night. Yo, yo, yo. Well, I, I have plenty of black friends, but I was just joking. <laughs> but your 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 defense of this makes me think it kind of was now. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was clearly joking. Was not going to make another comment about it. But you just wholesale Sorry. put your foot on Sorry. both feet on the brake. I thought it was racist against white guys because my my driver today was a white guy. Cap they they drive more aggressively because they're driving more and they think other drivers they're driving with a different urgency. Yeah, I just didn't know that that was a thing that people were like seatbelt shamers still. Yeah, like if you if I get into a car accident, I'm just gonna fucking sack up and go through the windshield like a man. Yeah, <laughs> I used to be that. I used to be that guy. You used to roast to people guy. for wearing a seatbelt. I gr- I grew out of it. You know what it changed? The day I had my first daughter, bro. Like my whole mindset changed. I was like, it's not that cool to just be out here without a seatbelt. And then I've been wearing a seatbelt ever since. Yeah, you get so people are like, oh, it's in the city you're going, you know, 30 miles an hour tops or whatever. No, you get up to 40 sometimes. Also, you're very likely to get into a car accident at some point in New York City. More than likely. I got into a car accident when I was 20, I think 25, 26. And the seatbelt saved me from going through the windshield like that. It, it actually does. It saves people's lives. So I didn't know that people were like, yo, don't be a pussy. I, wear a seatbelt. Now that I think about it, I always put a seatbelt on if I'm in the front seat of a car. But I don't if I'm in the back seat of a car, I, which is like an Uber or cab. When I was like, I think nine, eight or nine, uh, we got into a car accident. I was sitting in the back and I never used to put my seatbelt on. And I slammed my fucking face into the back of uh, uh, the headrest. And I lost a tooth in the headrest. And oh, then, really? you know, I was like bleeding everywhere. And I was just like, I always wear a seatbelt again. And then my mom made me write a thousand times. I will always wear my seatbelt. I will always wear my seatbelt. Did so you have you any fucking seatbelt. Bart Simpson to you, bro? Yeah. <laughs> Did you have any, any brain injury from that? You know what, man? I'm, I'm <laughs> worried. Like, <laughs> who knows? Did, Did you fake TBI? it? Did you fake it to get out of a test? No. <laughs> it's an epidemic. <laughs> that was before the concussion. That was before the concussion thing. Uh, yeah, so just wear a seatbelt. And here's my my train of thought when I get into a cab and I sit in the back seat, I'll reach for the seatbelt and try to put it on. And then if there's like a problem with the seatbelt, if it's like kind of a pain in the ass, then I'll just be like, oh, fuck it. I'm not going to get into an accident this time. I think that that's what most people tend to do. But I'd still try to put it on every single time. My dad told me, I remember I was 11. He gave me a speech. He goes, PFT, always wear seatbelts and condoms. And that was that was the end of the speech. Your dad calls you PFT? Yeah, he did. He knew. <laughs> <laughs> he, no. tiger, he tiger woods you into podcasting? <laughs> yeah, exactly. He, from day one, he, he gave me a rattle in my cage, and uh, it was shaped like a microphone. In your cage? Yeah. I had a cage. You didn't have a cage? No. I guess uh, soft parenting yeah. going on in Georgia. Yeah. My crib just had, like, the bars on top, so you couldn't climb out. Yeah, you had a cage, that too. That was a cage. It, yeah, but 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 it was a polite. They, it's something you can buy in Babies R Us to put on top of the, the what kind crib. Of, what kind of dish did you have? Dish? Yeah, like food dish. Uh, not sure. No, I don't think I got it. Mine was steel. <laughs> it was a steel. A steel dish. In my cage. <laughs> Gerber baby food in a steel dish. My next to the water. Was, <laughs> my my dad. I remember when I was five years old. He played the the Duke um, NCAA basketball game for me on vhs and i watched it and then he was like what do you think about christian leitner and i was like he's pretty good and my dad was like no no he's a jerk you say he's a jerk and then he that was my first take my very first take ever <laughs> that, i wonder if there are kids that are being raised to become podcasters these days yes 
Yeah, now more than ever. Do you remember that little kid, that video from like 10 years ago of that little kid memorizing the miracle speech? No. Yeah. Yeah. That kid has a podcast now for sure somewhere. What about the kids that- Podcasters, but definitely YouTubers. Yeah, they want to be YouTubers. YouTubers. Now they want to be TikTokers and YouTubers. Yeah, they, they there was like- And a, Twitch streamers. When like teachers are asking, what do you want to be when you grow up? Like people are saying, like kids are saying YouTubers, influencers. TikTokers, influencers. I wanted to be a firefighter. You can still do that. You, yeah. Yeah. You can be like a volunteer firefighter. I know, but it's hard around here because yeah. it's all full time. There aren't enough fires. That's the problem. No, no. The problem is, is that like it's a unionized. It's a very hard job to get. Yeah, but it, I'm saying if there were more fires, then people would have to hire more firefighters. The wheels are turning. Into Actually, head in right Bo- now. that was so, spooky. No, no, no. Back, <laughs> that was very spooky. No, no. Back. You just Matt made me remember. Can, can you just can made me remember. C- can remember? someone cut that up no, with no. a zoom in on Billy's eyes as he's doing the math on that? No, one? do you remember? I didn't like that at no, all. what I was saying. <laughs> What I just remembered was remember in Gangs New York when there was a fire and like six different firefighting companies came. Well, back in those days, all the firefighting uh, units were privatized. Mm-hmm. So they literally used to intimidate. So whoever you paid was going to come fight your fires, and they would they would set fires and commit arson to make big people- T's world, baby, anarchy. Let's fucking get it. Yeah, stop. They would uh, light fires. <laughs> that is literally your worldview. Privatize, yeah, pri- social services. Privatize everything. Let's fucking go. Bigger stick, better water hose. Let's fucking fight it out. No, but it, it was it was crazy back then because people would light fires to create a demand to pay for their services. Mm-hmm. And the only reason I'm remembering this now is because I was in McSorley's the other day reading about some of them on the wall while drinking lights and darks. Oldest. What is it? What is what is Nick McSorley's? Sorley's? It's like one of the oldest bars in America. It's lasted two pandemics, but it's just got so much history on the walls. We got to take you to McSorley's. Yeah. But you don't you don't drink beer, do you? I drink whatever we drink. They literally have light beer and dark beer. That's what they have. And you can drink a thousand. I like, I, the dark the darker beer is like the one with the hops, right? It's this one's more of like a, I don't a know. darker I don't know lager, beer. like an amber lager, and then a light. Pilsner. You make me so mad the way you say lagger. Yeah, what the fuck? Logger. Well, logger? Yeah. Lagger. Well, it's like sorry, a sorry, some of us have like different accents and shit. Yeah, no, that, that's how I would mm, say it. Lagger? I don't because I don't know how to say it, but like that's oh, how like. Logger. <laughs> <I know laughs> logger. <laughs> that was mean. I'm sorry. But lo- like lagger, like the long A's. Lagger. That's I th- Midwest. That sounds Canadian to me. Yeah, yeah. like Midwest, Northern. Whatever. Sorry, Billy. I didn't mean to make fun of you. Why are you just like so aggressive? I'm not aggressive. He's You're just mad ha- aggressive happy. today. I'm very happy today. Are you an angry drunk? I'm not an angry <laughs> drunk. I'm a very, very happy buzz. That's what I am. P- um, Big T's also very happy today too. Yeah, Big T, congratulations, and to you, Arian. I, you know, you have a tenuous connection to the University of Tennessee football program, but <laughs> <I must> say, <laughs> tenuous. <laughs> Big T, huge day. Your Tennessee Volunteers are number one in the country, and it's a big day. But we we have business in front of us. That's that's a good answer. It's a, it's a big day for Wednesday, but come Saturday, it doesn't matter. Got to go win a it's ball game. game, huh? No, I mean it's it's a huge game. That that's what I'm saying. Oh. Like, how excited were you were you I allowing agree. yourself to be for number one? I was excited. Like it's a really cool thing to have, especially we've been dog shit for a long time, and we're we're number one in the country. It's cool, but like. If I you, think what's really, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, lose this Saturday. You're not number one anymore. I do think, though, the people that are like, it's stupid to celebrate that. Actually, in terms of like what we want to do this season, it's big also because it probably means you have a better chance of still getting into the playoff if we lose to Georgia, while Georgia may not have that same opportunity at three. So it, it's um, it's big for a couple of reasons. But yeah, it's cool. Counterpoint. Yeah, I think I was gonna I was gonna I was gonna take it a step further. <clears throat> I actually think it's extreme. Like when Buddy made that kick uh, against Alabama, I, I was literally sitting on the couch. I was, or I was on my bed. I was watching on my shorty. I was like, "Yo, that that might have changed the the future of Tennessee football." Because what it did was it was like a changing of the guards. Right? It it could be a changing of the guards moment, <clears throat> wherein Alabama got all these recruits because Alabama was winning. Right. And when you see a juggernaut go down on national TV like that, but then you start to see the spotlight that is the University of Tennessee. Tennessee is different, man. Like it really is like a like college towns to where like they have all the resources and money to pump into that school and strictly fuel like football. 
it can be like the start of a huge run of getting like really big time recruits. And so like, like getting to be number one is what recruits look for. <clears throat> Cause I think that's why you, know, you got ebbs and flows of why teams go on runs and Alabama's on that big run. I think people are tired of going to Alabama. They're looking for that new blood in college football. And Tennessee is one of those programs that has all the resources in the world, has a really has a big history. Um, and it has all like like it has this this prestige behind it that I don't think has ever been really seen on a national level like it can be now given the day and age of social media and stuff. So like I think it's like a really big thing for future uh recruiting and stuff like that. So I, I think I think it actually is something not only to celebrate, but like to aim for because that's what that's what recruits is looking for nowadays. Shit like that. I think we're the coolest team in college football right now. We score fifty <laughs> points a game. Yeah. The stadium is incredible. The colors are cool. The black unis, the black new uniforms. Unis, we had like everything. Them motherfuckers was nasty. Those were awesome. Ugh. Oh my god! And we did you see? We have orange helmets too that we're gonna break out at some point. Yeah, Hawk showed me that uh, when I was in the equipment room. Chicken Chicken Hawk is the equipment manager. I um, think they got to beat Georgia. That's, yeah, I mean, beat mm -hmm. Georgia, and and this all settles itself. George. But it's also but it's also a great stepping stone because like let's see what's this is Hubel's what second year yeah <laughs> so it's like you it's you, crazy you, what he's done you you are uh, you are in good company man and your second year and doing that but yeah, especially like, at this school like I'm telling you this school any like big SEC school like you do that shit at Florida Georgia Alabama you're just bound to like start a run of like really good recruits like you're just, it just ha that's how yeah. it happens I it's, think I think they go to like a campus visit. And they, everybody that goes there is like, this place is awesome. It's a great facilities, great town. I mean, imagine but, but then having the actual number one ranking on top of it. It's it's now the total package. The one thing that was holding you guys back is, well, they've been shit for a while. How am I supposed to believe that they're really capable of turning it around? And now you have turned it around. I mean, imagine being a recruit at that Alabama game. Like, the, there's no school that can can match that atmosphere the whole game, then winning it and the scene afterwards like the, it's kind of too late for this class because most guys are committed at this point and like whatever but the class we have next year is already shaping up to be like unbelievable i'm excited i'm excited for hinden and tyler good for them very yeah. very happy for the work that they put in it's Thanks, cool man. it's cool to see that happen to those young guys probably going to be in new york here in a month yeah we should have <laughs> yeah, Hendon by. Hendon should definitely, yeah, de definitely Hendon should be. Yeah, he's now number one in the He's odds. the favorite. Mm -hmm. That's wild. Whoa. That's actually crazy that we... I'm glad he like, didn't take my advice. God damn. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. He probably I went that, from I told, a... I told that nigga to stay. I mean, I told that nigga to go. <laughs> he probably went from like a fifth, sixth round pick to like maybe first. Yeah. Also, that was really before I understood what NIL was and like how much you can get paid. I didn't really understand that. So it's like it's it's a little better to stay nowadays. You're getting a million dollars a season. Not much difference than going to the league, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. So Aaron, uh apology accepted. I don't mind being wrong. It means I learned something, brother. It's a good point. Yeah, all all you youngsters out there could take a note from Arian Foster and his attitude. Uh, so this is the start of macrodosing, and today's macrodosing is being brought to you by our great friends over at Game Time. If you want to go see Tennessee at Georgia, use Game Time. Need to be using Game Time. You need the you need the cheapest prices available for that one. You do, and they are the exclusive ticketing partner of Barstool Sports, created by fans for fans. Game Time is the ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last minute deals on tickets to sports concerts and shows and they guarantee the lowest price if you haven't given game time a shot yet don't know what you're waiting for you guys are going to love this app we've had tons of fans using it they hit us up on social they tell us about the great deals that they're getting a lot of macrodosians out there have used game time to get into baseball games hockey games football games and they're saving i've been using game time all year we went to go see the mets play the braves um, you guys went to go see the Yankees. Billy went to go see the Yankees again, too. Mm -hmm. um, we've all been using Game Time. Game Time is the best ticketing app, and it's the official partner of Barstool. Download the Game Time app, go to the account tab, create a login, and redeem code MACRO for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. Download Game Time, last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. 
download the game time app go to the account tab create that login redeem code macro for 20 bucks off your first purchase terms apply all right it's macro dosing I'm very happy. I'm going to give a special shout out to all my Pandorians out there. We got the new Avatar trailer released. I'm fucking so excited about that's how I this is I think this is how Big T feels about UT football. Like <laughs> yes. I just can't wait until like <clears throat> I'm just so fucking elated. It brings me so much joy that this movie's about to come out and so I'm extra hype about this shit. I'm hyped for you so being hyped. Man, somebody tweeted me. It was like, it's about to be three hours, dog. You sitting in there? For, I wish it was fucking 10. I would have sit in that bitch the entire time. I don't care. Jake, we out here. Jake Sully. That is actually, I literally say that about college football. People are like, the games are too long. I'm like, I get one of these a week for 12 weeks a year. I want it to be as long as possible. Mm -hmm. what, well, does that include like booth reviews, things like that? Do you like that experience? I mean, I would I would like them to to finish those as quickly as possible, but people are like, oh, that overtime thriller took four hours. Like, go fuck yourself. It was mm -hmm. awesome. Um, <laughs> we do have a bit of art that has been created in the macro dosing group chat. And I'd like to play. We should play for the Oh my god, they're planning for the like, listeners. I'll just I'll just plug it in. I have the audio. Okay, can you plug it in? I'm gonna yep. I just want to listen to the audio again though to myself. Yeah. They've planned six avatars. Oh, yeah, buddy. We out here. We're not going to live to the end of the Avatar franchise. That's so good. It's pretty dope. That's such a good I, to game. I had totally forgot about this shit. And I was just scrolling through Twitter yesterday. Like my shorty came home from work and I was just on Twitter and somebody do some dude was like, Hey man, when uh Aaron makes a beat out of big T's uh smoking a cigar, play that shit on the pod. I was like, Oh shit, I forgot about it. And so I went went to stew and just made that shit. It's so good. I I'd, I'd good forgotten stuff. how how uh lucky that last field goal was in that game. Oh yeah. It was, it was I, a knuckleball. It was a knuckleball. It was not a good hit. You still can't tell, even slowed down from the video, if it got just a tiny bit of a finger on it. I think the, the Alabama defender did. I would hope so. Yeah. To have that kind of rotation. I mean, that was that was destined to go in. It was. And if it had not gone in, it would have been like same old Tennessee, and you guys definitely would have lost that game. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But it didn't. It went in. It was so Correct. much closer. And on the new angles, you see it like it was only like it made it by about. I thought six he missed inches. it. I thought when I was watching the tape, I thought he missed it because it was such like a like a little knuckleball. And I was like, oh, yeah. that's short, mm -hmm. and, and it went forty. He got enough. Yeah, that's it. Was a he put a lot of uh, a lot of leg into it, but seeing it spin that way, it's like that that kick never goes in. Uh, Arian, I am I'm going to be trying out for the XFL. If you have any advice for me in my upcoming tryout, I'm going to be a barefoot kicker. So I'm going to I'm going to lose the shoe on my right foot. I'm going to tape it up and I'm going to see if that helps me at all, because I think that damn shoe's been getting in the way. That's been the problem. So I don't. Do you know the rock? Yeah. Wait, do you actually? What? I was in a movie with him. Yeah, he was in draft day, right? No, no Baywatch. Uh, oh, shit. Wait, you so were, I forgot you were in. I, I got a, I got a, I got a video of him. Say, oh my god, bro! I got a, cause like my mom is obsessed with this nigga, though. Like she like love, like will in front of her husband be like, I don't give a fuck if he walks by, I'm trying him, like that type shit. <laughs> and so I got like she just loves this dude, and so I got him to say hi to her over over a video message, and she fucking melted, dog. It was that was probably the coolest thing I've done for my mom. She loves that nigga, so like, yeah. I mean, you I know, know all these people and. 
None of them have come on the podcast yet, Aaron. We got to start. We got to start making moves. <laughs> I don't like bothering people, man, because I know I don't like to be bothered, so I don't like to bother other people. Like, fair, we'll take it. Yeah, but I mean, The Rock, he does love doing media when he wants to. We could get him before him. Rogan gets him. That'd be huge. I just, hey, I don't think his, I don't think he's gonna go on Rogan, bro. I just need him. Well, to, he, he was about to to promote his tequila, but now he's Rogan. Not. Rogan gonna pull a political take out of you, and The Rock is the most universally loved human on earth, and I don't think he wants to lose that standing. What's so, the like, most problematic thing you think you pull out of The Rock? I, I mean, just like like figuring out what party he supports. That would be like he's he's definitely he, he left. doesn't want to do that. He's absolutely he's absolutely he's, he's absolutely definitely left. a leftist. But what do you think? Like one of his I don't, I don't think he's a leftist. I, well, think let, like, yeah. I think he's probably like I think he's probably a corporate Democrat. Yeah, Hollywood, I think I, I think. Hollywood conformist. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, what if he, <laughs> what if he found out he like did he hates like paper straws? Did that just like makes headlines? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yeah, yeah I live he's, in Hollywood. He's, these paper straws suck. And it's like, and, and, I, and honestly, I. I don't know if I want it to be any other way. I don't. I don't want a politically infused rock. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like yeah, we got enough. We got enough hot takes, man. We we don't need you. you know what I'm saying. I, I'm tired of politics in general, anyways, man. I've, I've I've started I've started consciously trying to make more Republican and conservative friends just because I'm tired of this shit. I'm just tired of this shit. Although I think the ideas are shit. You know, let's just be friends, though. You know. Yeah. Are we, are you in favor of a COVID amnesty? Oh, oh, I I I, I thought about say, sending that in the group more. chat, but I was like, say more. What is that? What is that? I'll, I'll let Big T take this one. So a woman, uh, I don't know if she works for the Atlantic or that was just like an op-ed one-off piece, but she said, um, we need to declare a COVID amnesty and basically anyone that was dead wrong and said extremely terrible things during COVID, you should just be forgiven because it was scary for everyone. And she has in the past, uh, she had advocated for a lot of things that basically like uh, she advocated for like all schools being closed forever that led to horrific uh, now reading and math uh, deficiencies for kids everywhere. And she was basically like, it's okay that every that everyone was uh, talking a lot of bullshit for a long time because it was scary and we should forgive everyone. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about her, but I'm I'm over it. I, I mean, like I'm down for amnesty. I, Anything that anyone did during the pandemic, everyone's forgiven. No, I wouldn't say that. I got cheated on during a pandemic. Fuck that shit. Uh, <laughs> damn. Yeah. But, fuck that shit. But then political you absolve, But then you absolve yourself of all sin. I wasn't sinning during the pandemic. I was literally in the fucking house all day. <laughs> she wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> big t i think you should you should be the the bigger t and lead by example in this and say all is forgiven everybody can let's come together as humanity okay i'll start mm-hmm. pft i forgive you for making me getting vaccinated oh i never made billy get the oh. vaccine i told billy that we were going to be doing interviews at a place that required vaccinations and so if you were going to be, if we were going to I bring you, you no, no, we don't have to discuss and it, if I we were going you. to bring you into those environments, Am- Am- amnesty, Am- amnesty, ten, I forgive you. Seconds. I just, PFT, I just said, not give no, but I just, forgiveness but not for, I just not said, I forgive you. I just, nothing that this, you're forgiving see, me for. You're, you're not giving the amnesty, man. We're forgiving that each other. That shit didn't. No, boy, you're doing this right now, which is after, just don't get after the amnesty period. Amnesty, amnesty. It's okay. Well, you can't lie when, when doing the forgiveness Dude, we're doing the amnesty, bro. Come on. All right, Billy, I, I forgive the time that, that you came on to me during the pandemic and asked yes, if I wanted exactly, to sleep over. Exactly. And, and you tried to buy see, me lingerie. See, I forgive th- you for that. That is that is what it's about. That is what it's about. Okay. <coughs> Big T, I forgive you for never mind. You're you weren't gonna take that well, so I, I just pulled the cord on that one. For, does does right. anybody else have anything they want to get off the chest for amnesty? I forgive you for wearing black shoes with white socks. That shit is horrible, but I forgive you. Me? Right now, you're wearing black shoes and, and white big, socks. So big I wear tea. black shoes with white socks wait, every wait, wait. day. This what isn't the during the pandemic. Shit is fucking awful, bro. 
I can't keep track of all these. Really? I, I've never heard there's of this. A way, there's a way to do it, but that ain't it. I think a I'm doing it right now. One of the biggest mistakes of my football career. Black shoes, black socks. Yeah, yeah. One of the biggest mistakes of my football career was wearing black shoes, black socks, because it made me look so much slower on tape. That was one of the biggest mistakes. That's all what made you look slow on tape? All that white cleats. is cap. That Washington is, cap. That is no. No, no. That is facts. That, that's like known. I was already really you just slow, much. bro. What are you I know. Really I wasn't working. Slow. I wasn't working Shit with don't much. Make to make you be, look slow. You just slow. I know, bro. but you're not working with much to begin with. You need every advantage. I was wearing all black uniforms, and it made me look even slower than I was. I think black would make you look faster. No, it's like all a white. Sleek. All white makes you because it blurs. I think it all. Blurs. I think black shoes do make you look slower. Yeah, it's, they make your feet look slow. fact. Like when Peyton Manning um, would wear those, he would look extremely yeah, slow. Yeah, like 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 nobody ever said. You see when like uh, Devin Hester wore black shoes, like it made him look so slow. Like no, bro, like he's just fast, so it doesn't look slow. But that you is, were just slow. Peyton Manning is slow as shit. No, but <laughs> you hear that amongst coaches now in the huddle era, where it's like you got to wear white cleats or you're gonna look slow on tape. Just. I don't think like those were coaches. Those those were coaches that were slow. Yeah, yeah I was yeah, gonna say yeah. I don't think like Chris Johnson would look slow with black. Right, right. That's what I'm saying. He wore black cleats sometimes. Nah, bro, I ain't buying that. Um, Billy, do you have any blogs that weren't posted this week? Too um, hot for the blog. Uh yeah. I, I mean, it was about Paul Pelosi, but we don't have to talk about that. Oh, hey, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to find it if you won't. <laughs> yeah, well, let's see what Billy's I'm takes were. I'm kidding. I didn't actually write anything. Uh, but something I have actually been looking into recently is like Marcus Aurelius. Okay. I've been reading a lot of Marcus Aurelius. I have a buddy. That's cast cat from Rome, ain't it? Yeah, the stoicism. And honestly, like I remember I used to read him a lot in college. Uh, but I've just like revisited a lot of his quotes. And I have a buddy uh who's going through a tough time right now. So I've been sending him a lot of Marcus Aurelius content. And it's actually you good friend, it's some pretty great stuff. Like <laughs> for your for your it really like if you kind of understand what he's trying to say, I, I actually pulled up some quotes like it really might change your outlook on okay. life okay so for all of those like you know with people with anxiety depression like just listen to some of these like okay so here's one billy's not a doctor so this is marcus aurelius you have power over your mind not outside events realize this and you will find strength dwell on the beauty of life watch the stars and see yourself running with them the happiness of your life depends on the quality of your thoughts. Everything we hear is an opinion, not a fact. Everything we see is a perspective, not the truth. Waste no time arguing about what a good man should be. Be one. I don't know. Just if you're, you know, if you're looking for some inspiration, just read some Marcus Aurelius. It's actually some pretty cool stuff. Do you ever? He picture? was definitely wrong about a couple of those. Yeah, things. I, I didn't. I didn't want to like. I didn't want to pop this bubble. You know what? But second to last one was I'm, the platform for the Democratic Party. Which, Nothing's a I'm fact. Gonna, uh, Anything you see is subjective. Okay, that's cute coming from you. That is really <laughs> cute coming from you. But like so, but like so yeah. I mean, he's definitely wrong about a couple of things. But I, I, I can appreciate the sentiment. But it's like nothing. Like instead of thinking nothing matters, uh, like this is terrible. Like nothing matters. This is amazing because your actions don't like. It's like the base of stoicism. It's something I'm getting into lately. Yeah, I I agree in principle with a lot of those things. I also think that if you're if you're saying, um, like you can control how you perceive things, you can control your mind. Some people take that to the next step and is like mental illness isn't a real thing. Just choose to be yeah. happy. You know. Yeah. Right. Right. But it does help. Like certain people have a jaded outlook, mm -hmm. and I think it helps certain people who like have a jaded yes, outlook. Yes, I, I would agree with that. It helps people with a jaded outlook. And people tend to get a jaded outlook it, it, after something. This is more it, for situational. Yes. It wouldn't help you if you had a chemical imbalance, but if you have a jaded outlook, right. then it's good. Like, for example, if something, if an event happens in your life and it totally alters your, you know, vision of the world, mm -hmm. like that, this is the kind of stuff that can help you, you know, sort of get out of some of that jaded outlook i like that but i'm not advocating against mental like oh no i know yeah. that was that was nice i like the marcus Aurelius. our life is what our thoughts make it do you guys think that there's no such thing as a fact like if you hear somebody say something it's not a fact no that's ridiculous i let me check on that one you're gonna fact check that let one me, let me, you can't <laughs> fact that's the whole point 
I mean, I think it's just unfact checkable. I think it's just like not everything is set in stone is what he's trying to say. Mm -hmm. Which is a good sentiment, but yes. there are some things that are set in stone. If you jump off of a roof, you are going to hit the fucking floor. Now, I, here's a good one. So we're going to get into mind control in a little bit. I, I listened to a few podcasts over the last couple of days regarding just mindset. And I found some hilarious people, oh. some very, very funny people that uh, do think that they can control the world by their thoughts, by the power of positive thinking. And we can get into that a little bit. What, Please Bill? do. What? Nothing. What was that? You had the shit eating grin on your face. Again. No, I was just like, never mind. What? <sighs> shit That's eating Mark, grin. You, that I've heard that a lot. Aurelius. That you can control the world with your no, thoughts? No, you can't. Oh, well, That's this guy makes it beautiful. This guy thinks that you can. Yeah. The guy that I'm going to get into later. Word. Word. Actually, do you want me to do a little mind control trick on you guys? Just to start it off? Yeah. All right. If you and know, then we got if Caesar you, Milan. If you know what I'm doing, don't spoil it because it's classic. All right. Everybody, uh -huh. pick a number from one to 10, any number. 17. Wait, should we say it out loud? No. In, in your brain. <laughs> All right. So in your brain. Arian, uh, don't say it out loud. And also, it's one through 10. Don't say it out loud. Okay. I got one it. Oh, I, he did that 17 trick a while back. I just I just cut to the chase. But all right, let's do it. All right. Multiply it by two. Got you. Add eight to that number. Divide it by okay. two. Wait, can you go through the steps again? I forgot. Pick a number. <laughs> pick a number from one to 10. Okay. I got my number. Multiply it by two. Okay. Add eight to that number. Fuck. Okay. Divide it by two. Wait, wait, wait. You add eight to the number after you multiply it by two? Fuck. Yes. yes. So, so pick a number. I got a multi multiply it by two. Uh huh. Add eight. Okay. Add eight. Uh huh. Okay. And then divide that divide by two. Divide that. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, do you have that number? I got that number. Okay, I got it. I, I pulled out a calculator. Subtract your original number from that number. Okay. Got you. Got it. All right. So match that number to an alphabet letter. For example, <laughs> one is A, two mm -hmm. is B, three is C. Mm -hmm. Okay. Four is D. Mm -hmm. All right. So get that. You got that letter. Mm -hmm. Think. Yeah. Of, think of a European country that starts with that letter. Okay. Take the second letter from oh that country God. and think of it. Hold on, cuz. There's I, no I, way. I got I got hold on. I got to check and I got to check and see if this is in Europe. Huh? Wait, Sam. I, I'm following. I got it. Yeah, I got All it. Right, Avery's there. Yep. So now take the second letter from that country. Hold on, cuz. Hold on, hold on, cuz. Just just relax. It is not it's not a, a Okay, yeah, it's in Europe. Okay, okay. We get Okay. Okay. Take the second letter from that country and think of an uh -huh. animal. Okay. Okay. Got now it. think of the color of that animal. Okay. Oh, nigga. Okay. All right. Everyone's got it? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I know what he's going to say, so I have intentionally done something that is not what he's about to say. Uh-huh. Um, so go ahead, Billy. Here, let me you text. Rebel you. Hang on, let me text you, the group what no, he's don't, about don't, to say. Yeah, well, that's the whole fucking yeah, don't, point. Don't, don't, don't scream. Well, Billy, I, I, I you've just, just about said Billy, it. you've just done a formula. That's all you've done I know, to you lead you to idiot. a very specific. I just specific... told you before we started the thing. Don't spoil it if you oh, know no. what I'm doing. I didn't oh, no, know it oh, until no. you did it, Let's, and then I realized, I, oh, you're so fucking smart, Big T. Gray elephant. Gray elephant. Who has a gray elephant? Yeah, no. Who has a gray elephant? Who has a gray elephant? Yeah, I don't. Did you not Don't. BFD? Wait, hold, hold on, hold on. F finish what we doing. I got gray right now, elephant. I got twenty. <laughs> I got twenty two gray ostrich. elephant. I don't. I did a brown I got 22 elk. Twenty two ostrich. You did a brown elk. Yeah. You what colors? What, what, what what's up with the number? <laughs> the wait, no. how'd you get ostrich? What animal? What's the animal? And oh. the color of the animal. Ostriches are, I, I guess, kind of. It it depends on the black. They, they're black ones. What there's, country there's, did you get? Rome? That's Duh, not that's a, country. a country. Rome ain't a country? It's that's a city. city. Huh? It's Italy. Oh, no. You said country? I but said country. How, oh, how, did, it's, it's, how did your letter end uh, up being R? Because you were 18. 
You know what? I think is one through ten. It's a great. It's you a did great the math wrong. It's a great. You didn't, oh no! You didn't say. You didn't say pick a number through alphabet one through ten. But no, that's he said pick a number one through ten. I did. I picked eight, but okay. then I did all that shit. Then he said pick a letter. Okay, wait. So and then correspond no, that you, with the number so of eight, the letter. It was multiplied by two, so sixteen, right? Gray elephants from Denmark. That's what I had. Yeah. Yes, great. <laughs> See, so Mad Dog was the only one who did the math and followed the instructions right. No, and I got, did. Okay. And then you said pick a. Come on, cuz you said pick a number that corresponds. I'm sorry, pick a letter that corresponds with the number. Right. right? So one A, two B, three C. I picked R. No, no, no. But so your your number was eight D. originally. <laughs> yeah. So it's eight times two is sixteen plus eight is twenty four. Divided yeah. by two. Divided by two. Is 12 mm-hmm. minus your mm-hmm. original number is eight, which leads you to four, which is D. No matter what number you do, it's going to lead you to four. Right. So that makes right. it D. And then everyone thinks of Denmark. Then the second letter, that is E. And most Bro, hold on. He didn't, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. He didn't say yes, what he number did. correspond. Oh, well, shit. I right. missed. I thought he said yeah. pick. Well, it's because he went through a 19 right. step convoluted thing what to lead back, you to. I'm, I'm well, almost may- positive that you said pick. A letter. I, okay. I, I could be it's, wrong, but I heard you say okay. pick. It's okay. I think he this, said pick the this was number an, that corresponds this was with an your absolute I, letter. I, that I, this was wrong. an absolute goat no. fuck. I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was. But yes. I'm also. I'm also like a cup and a half in. So okay. That could okay. Be fucking with me. I, I forgive you. I, I got there. Yeah, Mad Dog got there. Thank you for following. Black, instructions, Ostr- Mad Dog. Black ostrich from Italy, <laughs> Billy. I. I what you have think it was here? fantastic. That was such a throwback, Billy versus Big T. I picked a. I did a black ice. What? I had a black eel. Oh, from black where? eel from Denmark because that's oh, yeah. the only country. Eel. I mean, good for you for thinking a different animal with an E. But the thing is, so basically the concept of that is the mind control is manipula- ma- manipulating you into choose the quickest thing that comes to your mind by making a succession of stuff that makes you choose stuff quickly. And then it actually traps you into Denmark. Then you choose elephant. Elephants are gray. Does that mean I'm mentally weak? No, that a little just bit. Means, that just means <laughs> no, 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 no. Hold on. <laughs> um, what are your assumption? Any, wait, but no, is there any other countries in Europe that start with a D? Is Dagi, I don't think so. Or is, you think is it's just Dagi, Denmark? Is, is Dagestan? Dagestan is in. It's in Asia. 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 It's in Asia. And that was I think my, it's a part of Russia. Too. That was my original guess, but then I was like, I don't think that's in Europe. So I think I it, th- that's in Russia. Yeah, I don't think there's any other D. Deutschland. Deutschland was my other thing, but no, which also leads you to E. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Huh. So yeah, good trick, Billy. I'm really good at following mm-hmm. instructions. Wait, Big well, T, what was yours? It wasn't a good trick because it got sniffed out. No, no because you probably know Big what it is. And I, I did not you, know. Once you got I to said, the 12th oh, step of your so, thing, I was like, let's so see what. you smart, Big T. You knew the trick. Uh, I, I did not know it until you did it. Spoiled it for the for the listeners. Well, no, I just, I saw through your your mind control. It wasn't my, okay, you're. You know, you're a free thinker, Big T. Billy, wait. That's true. Do you have any other tricks? <laughs> if he applied yeah. this a much critical thinking to his political point of view, we'd, <laughs> yeah. be, on, we'd be right here, my All right. brother. We would be right here. All right. So pick I, I pick think... a three-digit number with the same number, like 222-999-333. Okay. Angel number. So, yeah. It's What's the angel number? Three I'll digits. I'll that later. Okay. Oh, this is good. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, okay. I got, I got to focus. Okay. I'm a little okay, faded. I'm gonna, All right, let's get it. I'm going to text. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to text some instructions. Okay. No, just so, say do it. you understand we're on a podcast? Okay. Yeah. Well, to you guys, so you can get it. Pick a three-digit uh, number. Okay. With the mm-hmm, same mm-hmm. number. Yep. So like one 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 two 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 three three three. So got it. Got it. Got right. it. Are you sure? Like one hundred and eleven, two hundred and twenty-two, or three hundred and thirty-three. Got it. Yep. Right. Got it. So then add the digits of those numbers. And then divide the original number by the sum of those digits. Now, don't say your answer. You can put it into a calculator. Wait. So you, you add wait, those wait, three wait. digits together. So, so add, you add the three digits. So add like if it's 222, 2 plus 2 plus 2. Okay. That would be 6. Right. And then you would divide <laughs> 222 by 6. No. No divide matter what number you pick, it ends up being 37. Divide the original number by the sum of the digits. Okay. Hang so on. Okay. divide oh, right. the original number. So divide 222. Now everyone's got different numbers. But now we're all at 37 because they Fuck, all equal Big 37. G, I, I told you not to fucking spoil it. <laughs> Wait, it's like, Jesus I'm not Christ. at 37. What? 
then you didn't do it right. But they all equal 37. So continue. Yes, yes, Go to the next step. Wait, oh, wait hold that's on, hold trick. on. Now wait, that we're wait, all wait, at 37. Hey, hey, that's hey trick, mega, mega, mega mind, big T. I'm not there, bro. What yeah. number did you pick? So just trying wait, to- wait, that's the end of the trick? I'll no. Pick, okay, I pick, hold on. That's the end of the trick. Okay. So I thought it would be fun for the mega listeners mind. at home <laughs> to have that second where it's like, Oh, oh fuck. like they come hey, to this. Get out your feelings. I'm still here head. with you, man. Hey, <laughs> okay. get out your fifis, bro. What I'm number did here. you pick? So I was trying I to do something seven, nice seven, for the seven, listeners. Seven. You divide that by, by what? Twenty-one because it's seven plus seven plus seven. <laughs> Oh, and that will equal yep. 37. Yes, we had 37. that's okay. And that, and as will 111, 222, 333. So hopefully the listeners at home who were robbed of the experience of then learning that while <laughs> that they come true. to you know it. What, you know what? Big T's a fucking party pooper. Big T's yeah. a Grinch. Yeah. You're, you're a little bit of a Facts. Grinch. Come up with better things that are actually okay. <laughs> you know, not easy T, to dispel. I just, you know, some things are nice. Maybe Okay, Santa doesn't reel. Your Jesus Santa, never existed. Santa so. doesn't reel. Well, that's Santa that's Santa untrue regardless of what no, you think Jesus of divinity. See, that's what I, that's what I say. Jesus if he put that, that much critical thought to everything yeah, else he yeah, believed, yeah, we would yeah, be put right there. I mean, what he said is just put, wrong. It's not wrong. I mean, you think niggas walk on water. That's well, no, I said regardless of what you think of his divinity, there was a dude named Jesus who lived in Nazareth. Some things are fun, says who? Uh, historical record. Which historical maybe, record? Not maybe. Not all of them. Roman? Is there Roman maybe. historical record yes, of an there execution? Yes, there are many. There are atheists who have studied... The, Everyone, there is oh. no debate that there was Jesus, a guy named Jesus. Jesus who, yeah, of course. There is there's definitely a debate. Not a no, serious wait, one. Wait, wait, no, no. Big yes, T. It is. Big T. That's no. like saying there's, there's just, a, that's like saying there's a guy in Ireland named Patrick. Jesus was a very exactly. traditional no, J Jewish name back then. It's very well documented. Anyway, okay, do your so, next mind so, trick. It is so, not very well documented. It is loosely documented. Yeah, and we can kind of agree that there was probably a dude that did some cool shit. There's an Irish well, dude. didn't walk on water. There's an Irish dude in Ireland called Patrick. We know that for a fact. I love how Billy has gotten so triggered by Big T spoiling his magic tricks that he's broken. talked I'm himself into hell. I'm not broken. He's, he's, he's broken. talked his way in, I'm not into broken. heresy. I'm not broken. <laughs> You need to read some Marcus Aurelius and have some fun. That, that's a fact. Big T, you do. That's your homework. You have to. He's yeah. two effects. steps. You have to read some Marcus Aurelius and then, and then step two, you have to have some fun. Okay. I'm for sure going to do that. <laughs> <sighs> uh, how's your basketball team doing? Big T didn't show up. Oh, I thought I was going to. I thought this was going to be like a fun thing. I had that we could Bring us together with. I, I heard some things in a meeting today about the basketball team. From yeah, what do they have to say? Someone who I am closely attached to at work is on this basketball team and said that he carries it. So well, he also didn't show up. He said he's not showing up unless it's getting filmed from now on. Well, bad teammate. Um, <laughs> this is just a simple question I have for you guys, and there's no wrong answers. In fact, honesty is encouraged. I never got an invitation to show up to any of these basketball games. Neither did because I. Because you don't live in Hoboken and. Yeah. I Neither do I. You been... Oh, yeah, that's interesting. Big T doesn't but, live in Hoboken either. But you wanted to play on it. Uh, I was asked if I would play on it. I was like, yeah, sounds like sounds okay, fun. Well, I, I was in charge of inviting people. Oh, you were? I wasn't. Oh, who was? Actually, Big T, I got one more trick for you, and you're going to do this one with me. Okay. Billy, you just didn't answer right. the question. All right. Wait, All right. here we go. This is what I Billy think he's does. focused, man. I think he's focused. All right. <laughs> Put. That's awesome. Here's, here's a little trick. You can't. Big T's brain is impregnable. I'm, I'm about to I'm about to break Big T's brain. Wow. All right. Big T. Ask him about, asking about mail-in votes. Yeah. Big T, I'm not going to look. There's been one person in this studio today who is uh, who has voiced concern over mail-in ballots in this upcoming election, and it wasn't me. Confirm. Actually, let me look at how to do it. Uh, anyway, let's just get to Caesar Milan. And Caesar no, Milan is Billy, oh, Billy, you. Do you said you were going to break my brain. Well, when, let me. I need to just, just look something up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't no, sleep go. on this. Don't sleep on this. No, yeah, Don't look. sleep on this trick, because just look give me a second. Okay. But you know what you should sleep on? Wait, Billy. Helix match. Okay, I'm going to take sleep. over this ad read for you while you look up your trick that you're going to okay, use okay. to break Big T's brain. <laughs> if you want to have your brain never get broken, you have to have a good night's sleep. I woke up this morning, and you know what? I felt great when I woke up. I don't know if that was the universe telling me, hey, PFT, it's about to be your day. 
I don't know if it was because I slept in the exact right position last night. I don't know what it was. But the fact is, I woke up feeling great. And then as I stretched my arms and my legs out on my mattress, I touched the tag in the corner of my mattress. And I remembered, oh, yeah, that's why I feel great. Because I'm sleeping on a Helix Sleep mattress. Everybody is unique. Everybody sleeps differently. And that's why Helix has several different mattress models to choose from, each designed for specific sleep positions and feel preferences. If models that have memory foam layers, they provide optimal pressure relief if you sleep on your side. They have models with a more responsive foam to cradle your body for essential support in your stomach and your back sleeping positions. Plus, they have enhanced cooling features to keep you from overheating at night. And if your spine needs some extra TLC, they got you. Every Helix mattress has a hybrid design combining individually wrapped steel coils in the base with premium foam layers on top. It's the perfect combination of comfort and support. Take the Helix Sleep Quiz and find your perfect mattress in under two minutes. I took the Helix Sleep Quiz. I was matched with a Helix Twilight mattress because I sleep on my side. I wanted something that felt firm and cooling. Sometimes I run hot at night. Sometimes I get a little bit sweaty. Sometimes I have trouble getting to sleep on softer mattresses. And sometimes I wake up in the morning with a bad back if I'm not sleeping on my own mattress. Helix solved all those problems for me. I love Helix. I will always love them for that. They're offering up to 200 bucks off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash dose with Helix. Better sleep starts now. All right, we're back. Billy. This is a new segment, Billy Breaks Big T's Brain. Over two so far. A battle of the I Titans. wasn't trying to it's break your brain. I was trying to do a nice Let's exercise. Get this one. 333 gets you into the Hall of Fame. All right, here. Here's a ball of paper. All right. This is what you're going to do. I'm not going to look. You're going to put the ball of paper in one of your hands, and I'm, I'm really not going to look. Is he just giving himself a 50-50 shot of guessing something? Is yeah. that what this trick is no, to break my no, brain? Because I no. think he had to look it up online. I don't think that he would yeah. have looked that up. So I'm not looking. Just, I can confirm Billy's not looking. I'm not looking. Put it in one of your in one of your fists. Mm-hmm. Squeeze your fist and hold it above your head. Both of them or just the one that has the paper in it? Just the one that you have the paper in. He's not looking. Not looking. Squeeze it tight. Squeeze it well. Are you, are you squeezing it well? Are you squeezing it well? I'm squeezing it pretty well. <laughs> All right. Now I want you to take the piece of paper and drop it. Now display your hands to me, palms up. I mean, this isn't, this is just stupid. This is, this is a mind trick. And you still got it wrong. <laughs> that was, it was literally just him to, taking I, I a 50-50 shot at something and still it got it wrong. It wasn't. Was, was he actually holding it above his head? Yes, yeah. I have no, the video trick, proof. The he was, trick he is, was looking for like white in your knuckles yeah, or something. The trick is... It's not mind control. I squeezed both fists equally as hard. You're not supposed to squeeze both fists. That's what I said. One fist. Fucked hard. <laughs> Anyway, also, you were looking at um, the first of all the hand the that palms. had the paper in it yeah, has like is, a little a little layer of film this on is, it that you should have been is, looking this for. Is stupid. Wait, Secondly, wait, you, this Billy, is did stupid. you tell him not to squeeze the other fist? Or? Yes, I told him squeeze one fist. I, I know you told him to squeeze the fist that has it, but I don't know if you said just squeeze. One also, fist. you were looking at the palm, so that wouldn't have meant anything anyway. Because one palm is supposed to be white. It was from this this movie called The Illusionist. That I remember. Okay, look, like I am squeezing this as hard as humanly mm -hmm. possible, not moving this hand. They're still the same. No, it's not. Well, yeah, it's immediately still, after. Uh, so yeah. you were just looking for. I mean, this yeah, is that's the trick. You took a 50 50 shot. Oh, no, sorry, Big T. Magic doesn't exist. And it's all tricks and illusions that's supposed to like, you know, be kind of cool. If you get the next one, rush. 250 ain't bad. Hey, you know what? PF, I mean, Big T, if you can do one and try to create some, you do know, you, something cool for people, then go for it. Do you it. have any more, Billy? I prepared a couple and Big T has ruined all of them. So let's move on to like some historical examples of mind control. I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that. Oh, Arian, doing. you missed it. I did. It was pretty funny. You can, you can listen to it later. Big He's T 0 for 3. Big T just Sir. is a, a <laughs> bah humbug Big T. Ah, uh, man. Well, I don't know what to say at this point. It seems like 
you guys are at each other's throats. I'm not. It's just. I'm not know. at anyone's throat. It's just like if you're trying it's, to. It's called illusionism. It's kind of cool. And like there's like like fun things that like one. Like actually, once you see the trick and then see I'm how I'm hoping works, you it's have one that can like get me. That's I would well, love I that. I said originally. This is actually thing. interesting because this is actually interesting because Big T is obviously not keen on being duped. I'm I'm curious his his, his appeal to uh, like a lot of his subscriptions in life. Like for instance, the Bible why do you think that is real as opposed to a fictional book? I think the world is far too organized to have happened by chance. Then explain testicles. I was actually thinking about this on the way here. By yeah, divine hold on, hold on, design, hold on, hold on. Baby, baby why steps, would man. testicles baby, baby, be baby outside steps. of the body <laughs> if getting hit <laughs> hurts them? Baby I, I don't I don't know, Billy. That's I, not I, have, I actually my, have an answer for that. Because they need to be kept cool? Yeah, because the temperature why, regulation. Then why didn't they just create testicles that could temperature regulate while being protected yeah i don't know it's well how does that so how do you think of god <laughs> divine design i don't know but so so this is this is interesting like I, i'm i'm not really saying there is or isn't i'm just interested into your logic right because a lot of the things that you're not falling for is exactly what like is written in the bible like there's no logic i in disagree the bible, with right? that okay give me something logical in the bible that is miraculous that's logical I mean, those are inherently uh, a miracle is inherently illogical. Agreed. So, so why would you subscribe to something that is illogical? It, it is equally illogical to me that there is a God who is created the universe as that it Hold exploded I, out of nothing. Put, put that's not the claim, but let's put God on the shelf for a second. Okay, we're not talking about God. We're talking about miracles. Because what you said was miracles are by nature illogical, right? But yet you purport them to be true. I think if you believe that there's a God who created the entire universe, there being uh, a guy who came to earth and did miraculous things is not uh, a far leap from that. But it, but it is. is it I, I, I don't think so. Okay, so so why is that saying, any, why is that any okay, I'll, I'll explain. I'll explain. I'll explain. So what you're saying is you shelf your reasoning when it comes to believing that there's a higher power. No. You just but I but think I believe admission, that because miracles, of reasoning. Well well it's it's irrational. Like there's no there's no reasoning behind miracles. Your, your reasoning is because there has to be a God, therefore he produces miracles, right? No, not necessarily. I think it's that okay, if, if there is a God, mm -hmm. then you have already, you already believe something that is, it, it takes no further leap to then believe that Jesus was the son of God who came to earth and did the things that are in the Bible. That's not true. It takes, it takes it definitely, I mean, one third of the world doesn't believe that. It definitely takes a leap. I'm not saying everyone believes it. I, yes, I'm saying, but once you already, if if you believe that God is omnipotent and all-knowing and created the universe, mm -hmm. then it it makes no less sense that Jesus is the Son of God who came to Earth and lived well, his life. Well, that's that's I mean that's actually my point though. See, which is actually what's interesting to me is that an otherwise rational human being suspends that rationality and cloaks it in rationality and says it's rational but can't see or refuses to see outside of the realm of their perspective and seeing how irrational it is because it is a belief system does that make sense i think what what you call irrational i would say that the universe exploding out of a single point of nothing for no reason at some point is equally irrational okay well let's just agree you don't know the big bang theory and move on from that point cool no oh, okay well explain it to me then i mean see this is no dude so okay so then why why, why not just admit that you don't know what it is i don't i don't understand i know much. what it is when, i don't know every you don't intricacy know i didn't study it well that's the problem i'm, I'm not like, why 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 
why cast away a, be uh, a belief and a set of facts is what it is. Why cast that away when you haven't even I know the it, uh, okay, I, I will humor you. The the Big Bang Theory at its at its basic tenets is that all the energy in the universe exploded out of a single point at some point, however many trillions of years ago or whatever, for we don't know why, we don't know how necessarily, but it all just, and then the universe appeared. I think that's- a No, so, no, it's not. So this is what I'm saying. So if if you ever decide to look into it, right? Um, It's a lot more detailed than that. Yes, um, correct. The and 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 the rationality behind it actually follows. Like there's evidence behind it. And this is this is why like and listen, I'm not even saying there is or isn't a god, right? I'm I'm definitely an atheist, but that's like a lack of belief, not necessarily an assertion that there isn't one, right? It's it's a very different um but what I'm interested in is when Billy was trying to mind fuck you. You have certain standards in which you're not going. But when it comes to belief, you don't have those same, same set of standards. You say, well, if you believe in a God, right, this, 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 and has to follow. Like, this is not an interrogation. I'm just genuinely curious of, upon the rationale in which you base it on, because it doesn't necessarily follow um, your line of reasoning for an, anything else. I mean, and it's not just you. The, the 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 best way I can explain it is that while I do think it is equally, if not more, rational that there is a god who created the universe as it exploded out of nothing, that yeah, there is an element of. I mean, Jesus said, "You need to, it. It requires faith." Got you. It's not. Yeah, you that's you have. That's why if it was cut and dry, saying. then. It is, a, it is always saying to say uh, your arms are too short to box with God. And like once people invoke that, like once people invoke, well, there's an element of faith involved, then there's literally nothing I can say. That, it's that not can, invoking any. That, that's what the it, Bible it says. Does, you either believe it or you don't. A, but that's what I'm saying. You're invoking that as like almost a trump uh, card and saying. No, no, I'm this doing is, my best no, no, to answer I, your I got, question. I got, I got, I got, I got. I got it, I got it, got it. What you're doing is you're using it as a placeholder in your otherwise rational line of thinking, and you're and you're placing that there and saying this is good enough. And where in any other aspect of your life, you would question it, but in this specific aspect, uh, 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 juncture in your life, it's good enough for you to to not dig any deeper. I don't agree with that. I I agree you don't agree, but it's what's happening. Okay, I think I, I think I have a trick for Big T. Okay, <laughs> shoot, man, <laughs> shoot. All right, this is what we're gonna right, do. Wait to do to perform this trick. Yeah. Um, first of all, you have to come to um, a mass service every Sunday for the next thirty years, and then you have to read this book, and we have to talk about this book every day. That's that's what Arian's saying is how yeah. you brainwash Big T. Um, hang on, hang on. I want to go back to one more thing. You have to then tell me, is, since you're uh, the scientist, tell me what the Big Bang is. I'm definitely uh, since, not a scientist. Well, you you no, seem to. But Big T, I actually, you agree always with want you to put it on on other people. So tell me, tell me what the Big Bang no, is. No, no, no. I don't, I don't. I don't always put it on other people. What I do is I ask you if you know something, and you tell me yes. And, and I think I, I did a fairly you, a, a decent job okay, of explaining the basic. But you don't. What you do is you um, you minimize its impactfulness, and you minimize you know, you minimize. Not only do we know that's what happened, we know like to a certain degree, like that's what happened. And, and there's so much stuff that has come because we know that's what happened. So it's not like it just exploded out of nothing. Like there's no such thing as nothing. No, like, so so let's, well, let's uh, a couple things. Ju just a I, couple things. First of all, I I don't. Uh, the Big Bang actually sounds like what would happen if the way Genesis describes the origins of the universe did occur. So I don't. Yeah, or if I invited all your moms over to my house. <laughs> but but quit quit laughing. I don't I don't like the the disrespectful way you're talking, Marin. Out. Secondly, uh, then what was before Ooh, the Big Bang? I, I'm out. Ooh, I didn't like the, I didn't like the disrespectful Ooh. way you were talking about my magic tricks. Wait, Billy, your tricks you're not, suck. Okay. You're not let 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 Arian and and Big T have this conversation. Okay. Sorry. All right, so no, you're good. So I wasn't, I was, I wasn't laughing at you. I was, I was laughing. What you said was funny. So like, there's no, there's no, there's no disrespect. But 
Well, well um, let, let, let's uh, put aside what, what you believe or don't believe. Let's say for a second yeah. that that everything in the Bible is true and that God okay. uttered the phrase, let there be light. Let's just say that right. happened. Mm -hmm. Does the Big Bang not sound like something that could happen in the physical world if that's what happened? Well, I think no. Uh, and because the reason as to why is because what the Bible does a very good job of is it leaves a lot of wiggle room, right? And that's the exact opposite of what we know science to be. And I'm not, I'm really not juxtaposed posing them against each other. And I love that word, but there is a certain, um, there's a certain viability we have with science, right? There's that we, we grow from it. We get things out of it. Uh, the Bible is, is so subjective that there's nothing really to be learned from it other than like cultural things that we may or may have not developed on our own. Does that make sense? And so when you say, there's the big bang, doesn't that sound like, no, it doesn't. Why not? Um, uh, because it's, it's so vague. And also there's so many scientific inaccuracies in the Bible, right? And like, so in revelations, it says the stars will fall out of the sky. Like that can't be the case. Cause we know what stars are and there's no such thing as them falling out of the sky. Um, there's, there's plenty, I mean, there's hundreds of scientific inaccuracies in the Bible. And, and so what most, uh, people who believe in the Bible as to be the hundred percent word of God, what they do is they'll say, oh, well, that was just an analogy or that was just an allegory. But you're not, you're and not doing what we agreed upon though. I said, let's, okay, let, let's say everything in the Bible's true. Okay. Then, so, so God says, let there be light at, at the beginning of the universe. Big Bang happens. Why doesn't that make sense? Uh, how, how, let me, let me read the, uh, let me read the verse really quick. It's been a minute since I looked at shit. God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God said the light was good. I don't know what the good light has to do with anything. Um, then he separated the light from darkness. That doesn't make any sense. Then he separated the light from darkness. Light inherently is separate from dark. God called the light day and the darkness night. And that, see that, that in itself is, is inaccurate. Like there is no day and night other than the rotation and how the earth spins. If, if the, if the Bible was like, Earth is tilted and it spins on an axis and that's what creates the seasons and the rotation is why we have night and day. It's the illusion of night and day. There really isn't a night and day. It's just you're facing the sun or not facing the sun. That would be impressive and that would I would take it more seriously. But this sounds like it's written from people who understand the world from the knowledge that they have. Does that make sense? Yeah, so, I, I, I don't disagree with you that if the Bible had every fact ever, that that it would be pretty easy to to listen to it. Well, well, it's not, it's not it's not it's not every fact ever. It's like there's certain things that are inaccurate. Like it's not it's just not accurate. Like it doesn't specifically say that the moon doesn't bear its own light; that it's just a reflection of the sun's. Like if it said that in two thousand, early two thousand BCs, like. That's impressive. And that would make me, it would bring me more, it would bring it more uh, credibility in being accurate and written by somebody who had knowledge outside of the times. But there's nothing in this work or any of the other works, uh, religious texts that say you, you had knowledge outside of the realm of the space in which you occupied, which was, you know, our societal understanding of the, of the universe. I think that this whole thing just boils down to in, in talking about the creation of the universe, you get you, you think they're uh, they're inherently at odds and they can't exist with each other where not and true. then the the Bible and and like science. Yeah, not not true. OK, why not? I, I feel like everything you've uh, said would would indicate that. But 
No, I, I think there are there are things in the Bible that are useful, um, but I think there are inaccuracies that okay. that definitely conflict with our understanding of the. Of but the but new what I was going to say is, eventually, you get back to a point where I'm like, "How did this happen?" You're like, "I don't know, just happened." And when right. I, and when I get to the same point, I'm like, "I think it it makes more sense that God created it rather than mm -hmm. it just it just happened and we don't know." So how does that make more sense to you? Um, uh, I, it just does. Is it possible that you have been given an explanation and that it, that, that you're okay with that explanation? Because I don't, what I don't, do you mean I don't given? Say, somebody told you that there's a God. You didn't, you didn't discover that on your own. Uh, sure. But I, I, I think you know me well enough to know that I don't just go along with, with what I'm told generally. I don't think that's the case, but not disrespectfully. What I mean by that is culturally, right? We live in a majority, majority Christian society, right? If you were born in the Middle East, I would say the probability of you being Muslim would be high, right? And so we're, we're, we're kind of victims of our environment. And so when I say somebody told you there was a God, um, you were born in the South. And so it was kind of just known and that's what the culture has been for a, a very long time and so it's not a it's not necessarily a slight um i think that you accept it because it has been uh pushed on you since you were a kid and as kids we're very vulnerable and susceptible to a lot of things and as adults there are still grown adults that will believe in this and justify it and have their evidences and what say. Um, uh, and that's OK. I'm not saying like I said, this is not a I'm not I'm not trying to shit on anybody's belief. I don't I, I, I just I don't think your reasoning but, is incorrect, but I think your conclusion is incorrect. I don't think they're mutually inclusive. Also, I went through a point in my life where I didn't go to church. I, I wouldn't have said I was a Christian. Um, and then I decided for myself later in life that I, I do think that's that's true. Um, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Why do you think you settled on Jesus as the son of God and as the, the I mean, the Holy Trinity is confusing in itself, but uh, and, and you didn't settle on Islam and Allah or you didn't settle on Judaism or Hinduism. Like what, what do you think is the reasoning for you to settle on Christianity? Again, I don't think you're incorrect in saying, yeah, if you're born in Iran, the, the likelihood of you being a Christian is far lower. But I, I don't think that's necessarily, that doesn't make it untrue. No, I, I mean, I agree. It doesn't make it untrue. What, what, what I would, I, I guess, what made what, what made it interesting when Billy was on your bumper about his mind tricks <laughs> was you're not an unreasonable human being, and but but and and most religious people are not unre unreasonable human beings. But what I've found throughout my journey is that when it comes to certain things. Um, they kind of posit it as reasonable, like, well, there can be nothing else there for God. Um, that can also be anything, right? So it's like, it's Jesus to you. It's Allah to somebody else. It's Krishna to somebody else. It's woo -dee -woo -dee -woo. And so reasoning through it doesn't make much sense for you to settle on that conclusion other than the litany of um, influence that has been around you. Well, just uh, the the last thing I'll say on this, I think you know me pretty well. And that what what you said about like Billy's thing, like I, I feel like that would indicate to me it's actually more likely that I I reason through things and, and think about them a lot. But uh, j just the final thing I'll say, I find there being a God that created the universe and it happening randomly equally unlikely at a point zero 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 continue on for infinity one chance so and and i choose to believe the latter 
Um, I, I find them both incredibly unlikely and that the the universe that we occupy is so incredibly organized and everything that we know about living on Earth happened so perfectly for it to even happen ever that I don't think it happened randomly. I, I hear you. Um, ha have you ever, and this is like, I mean, it's getting kind of long-winded, but um, have you ever given any serious thought to there not being a supreme being? Absolutely. All the time. And and what what swayed you from that logic? I think it's what I just from, said. From that line of reasoning. Right? So, you, so you're saying the the uh, everything's organized. Okay, so like, so when you say organized, do you mean um, what? What do you mean by organized? How the universe uh, is uh, that the Earth is the precise distance from the sun that you can get warmth from it, but you won't die. That there is life at all. Like everything is just it it. It doesn't make sense that it just occurred out of nothingness at some point somewhere. Again, look into the Big Bang Theory. But if, okay, how about this? Like, do, do you agree with the fact or disagree with the fact that at one point the sun will engulf the earth? Uh, I think so. It definitely will. And so if you look at the vast historicity of, our solar system, um, we believe that Mars had liquid water on it, right? And there may have been life on there and it got too hot. And likely that is the Earth's fate. Um, do, do, you, do you think that instead of life having to be perfect, or have you ever thought, I don't know what you think, have you ever thought like instead of all these circumstances had to be perfect rather than it's like, it's like water forming in a puddle, right? water forms in a puddle perfectly to fill it up or the circumstances that have just so happened to have to be in that you know with gravity and water it fills the puddle perfectly yeah but i don't think the the two things you're equating are equatable the, ju just to butt in what arian's right. talking about that idea of all these situations that happen and occur is the reason why it happened as opposed to the puddle filled the water by happenstance, right? So your idea is that because of these uh, conditions, it occurred. Mm -hmm. I sort of believe that that can also be described with the reason that those uh, conditions occurred is because of some reason or some maybe even force or being. It's that only, could be the case. That's that's sort of I, I, my theory on the whole thing. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't disagree that that could be yeah. the case. And so it would be like, uh, you know, uh, the snowball on the top of a hill, right? If something pushed it, right, right, meaning the start of this whole thing. If something pushed it to to get to the point where it's at now, um, we have yet to find evidence of that other than like anecdotal or uh, just feeling, right? And, and so what. What I, what I say is like, I, like I said, I, I used to be like, there is no God. I, I just, I don't know. And that was, it's an arrogant position to take. And I think right. likewise, the antithesis of that, which is there is, I, I believe it's an also arrogant position to take, but I don't knock it. it. Like get through life how you get through life. But my position now is if, if it does take, I mean, I mean, it, it, it took, if it took something to push that life alone, like, like I said, we haven't found the catalyst, right? I'm okay with not finding the catalyst, right? Or I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't that. I'm okay with the search for finding the catalyst, but I don't think an assertion of what the catalyst was does us any good other than make you feel better. And if that is the case, then I actually I'm all for it. Okay. Religion has always been used as a way to to explain the current unexplainable. And if we're at the point where there is still an unexplainable, I think there might be a case of religion. I don't know if logically that, that necessarily holds up. Well, it's like the arrow, the arrow hitting its target. Yeah. I think that um, I'm not smart enough to know. 
and I don't think I'll ever be smart enough to know. And even if I do think that I know, I, I'll think to myself in the back of my head that I'm not certain about it. So I'm, you know what I've decided? I'm just along for the ride, baby. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Yeah, stoicism. Just, just just buckle up and enjoy. <laughs> it's just stoicism. Stoicism. That's no. <laughs> so buckle up, have a good time, be nice to people, do unto others, that whole thing. Yeah. Uh, and... Maybe become a Scientologist. Should I, I, should I still do the trick? Let's, let's just move on. <laughs> no, I want one more trick. You want one more trick? Okay. One All more right. trick. Uh, you guys pick an object in the room, and then I'm I'm going to go pee while you guys choose it, and we'll figure it out. It's not going to take that long. I, I've got my object. <laughs> I mean, uh, I guess it should take a little more time because he's... Uh, <laughs> as a group, you got to convene and pick one object for everybody. Oh, okay. Oh, we have to talk okay, okay. 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 All right. Uh, let, let me know when he, let me know when he leaves the room. Let me know when he's gone. And Billy is he, out. Of, okay, gone. so here's what I think that we should do because um, just so that he can't hear us. Aaron, you pick, you pick an object. Oh, smart. That's in this room. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. I'm thinking this window. Okay, which one? There's there's a couple. The, actually. There's there's two windows. Okay, the one to your right shoulder. Okay. Is or is a, that too? Is it? Is, no, it is that an big, object? That's an object. What's like the most obscure I mean, thing in here we could pick? One of the bobbleheads back there. Well, no, I, 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 I okay, like, okay, okay, okay. Oh, is this a windows, Jesus candle the, behind you? Is the, this Jesus the candle? The window's interesting. No, it's, no, Josh, it's Allen. Josh Allen. The windows. Oh. Who is windows Jesus in this room, but it's also a, a barrier to not being. That's upset. that's kind of, that's kind of why, because he's gonna probably think he's like, gonna flip shit. You think he'll get mad? Because the window is definitely in this room. Do you room. think he'll get mad? Have you have you been here? What that's, about like the, the Wisconsin room. hat on the top right? That is in the room. It's behind him too. It's too simple though. The window is an object. I mean, yeah. Or I what like, about I, and it, I, I, it's and it's so not. Uh, it, it, it's inconspicuous because there's so many things in there. Could the object be Billy? Could the, what about one Yo, of the things? I like that. I like that. What about one of, I the like things, that. one of the things in your pile behind you? I, I like the idea of picking Billy. I like, I I like that too. idea too. Yeah. I, okay. Okay. Billy's the object. Okay. It's going to be good. I'm going to take some lion's mane mushroom before Billy gets back in. I had a cup of coffee actually over the weekend. You know, they sell like coffee that's in Whole Foods that has lion's mane and mm -hmm. wheezing mushrooms and stuff in it. That's like a new thing. It's like thirteen dollars a cup of coffee. Mushrooms. Oh, in love your, lion's mane in your coffee. I like to, lion's mane. Like you guys think that uh, Jake Plummer's stuff might be placebo. I, I think it's. Take it. I take it. Okay, so all right, Billy. Right, so you guys so we're back one. And Billy, Billy's magic trick, or sorry, uh, mental mind control trick. Mentalism is brought to you by Ridge Wallet. Ridge Wallet holds up to 12 cards plus room for cash. There's over 30 colors and styles, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium. It's made with RFID blocking technology that protects you from digital pickpocketers. It secures anywhere from two to six keys in their digital, or excuse me, in their new key case as well. It organizes your keys in a compact silhouette and fold out for easy access. So they've got the Ridge Wallet and they have the new key case. I have both of them. And I use my Ridge Wallet every day. My Ridge Wallet is my new home for all of my cards, with the exception of the two that I put on the back of my phone. But besides that, they're in my Ridge Wallet, and it's so easy. It's awesome. It's a great wallet, and it blocks RFID. They have six colors of the key organizer as well, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium. Check out their site. Use code MACRO. Get 10% off your order. Check out their site. Use code MACRO. 10% off your order today. All right, Billy. We have our object. Okay, you guys all chosen one object? Mm -hmm. Yes. We have, and I'm going to pick one of you. Mad Dog. Yes. Why don't you pick Big T? <laughs> it's interesting. Because he's going to cuz he's going to try to fuck it up. In Mad Dog. So only someone that will fall for your tricks. My tr Oh yeah, she she I'm fell for the first weak. one. Yeah. Interesting. No, that's fine. Time. I'm no, not No, 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 no let her go. Yeah, no, cuz Big T's going to try so It's Mad Dog. You yeah. have to you're gonna name a string Tell me what to do. of ten objects in the room. Okay, any ten objects in the room. One of them mm -hmm. has to be the object you chose. Okay. Okay. Yep. Go. What okay. is this shit? Um. Okay. The red uh, football helmet. Okay. The champagne bottle. Okay. That's two. Okay. PFT's backpack. Okay. Wait. Which backpack? Okay. Okay. 
Um, the game time ticket booth. Uh-huh. Um, this is fun. The Powerball or the lottery okay. machine. Um, the Berman picture. Okay. Um, um, this. Okay. You. Okay. Well, wait, you gotta make it an object. You're an object. You're not. We're all objects. Okay. Okay. Um. And just pick me. Pick pick the rest of us too. We'll all okay. Be PFT, Avery. <sighs> That's ten. That studio is kind of messy too, by the way. Yeah. The fuck? <laughs> okay. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you could do, do. You took a little no. exception to that. No, it just, it says more about you that you're judging the studio. Okay, so. Einstein yeah. had a very messy desk. So Did you know that? You know, that nigga was figuring out important shit. <laughs> yeah. Like like how to hit on his cousin. Okay, so you guys picked me. And he did that shit. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Good job, Billy. You guys picked me. Explain that shit, Big T. Well, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. Whoa. What? <laughs> yeah, you got it wrong again. <laughs> <laughs> no, Big T's fucking with you. It was Billy. It was Billy. No, it but was. see. Wait, wait. I didn't like No, that. it's not. Yeah, it was Billy. No, it wasn't. Yeah. It was the window. No. No, Did we you changed not hear the last we changed half of Billy. Conversation. It was no, Billy. We Billy. We, we, we changed the Billy. What? Oh, well, then that was that was shitty on everyone's part, including you saying, oh, just throw us in there. We'll be to make it to take 30% away. No, I was trying to. Oh, I regret. Mind. I regret letting y'all do this. Do you want to do it again? Yes. 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 No, yeah. We got to do it again because. Actually, actually do. Yes. Okay. You got to leave, though. Okay. Get out. I was gone the whole time. Avery, will you go with him to make okay. sure he leaves okay. far? Okay. Okay. Yes. But text me individually what it is. Okay. We can't, like, stutter when you're picking stuff. Have stuff in mind. Yes. Yeah. I, I, th I think his trick that time was he took the seventh one. I think that's what it was. I'm going to say it first. He did that. Wait, is that or he? No, he has wait to pick you. Billy left his phone in here. Wait, wait, we gotta so, make sure if it's on. Hold on. It's probably listening to us. Oh, he's yeah. probably recording this right now. I think Billy just cheated. But I mean, he couldn't play. He couldn't no, no, play no, the recording without us hearing it. I actually think that. Okay, I think it was the seventh one. I think that's where the trick was. All right, so we're gonna go. So, so wait, wait. Okay, big T, you decide. Um, good hustle, Mad Dog. Headphones? Yours. What do you want to do? Yes, but only say one person. Because if I said like my headphones and your headphones, he knows it's one of those and it just has a 50-50 shot. Okay. So my headphones, camera, cooler. Wait, so what are we picking? Big T's headphones. Okay. We're picking Big T's headphones. Hang on, hang on. Let me make a list. Let me make a list. This is like ASMR. Yeah, it is. Hang on. I got really into ASMR recently. Do some ASMR for the people, my dog. Actually, I'm changing it. I'm changing it. To what? No. 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 Wait, why are you changing it? I'm changing it. To what? To pardon my cheesesteak sign. Okay, good call. Because it seems like something big enough that you look at just to make it random, but it's not. Cheesesteak sign. My headphones. PFT's headphones, so that he thinks it's one of those. Okay. Um... The Leroy Memorial. Uh, Avery's camera. Fill my damn wine. All right. All right. Hang on. Oh, hang on. Oh, hang on. Oh. We're, we're talking quietly. We're, we're coming up with a list of the things we're going to say. The, the thing. That okay. We, what's the what's the, what's the one we actually. It's, it's it's a sign that you can't see. It says, pardon my cheesesteak. That's what it is. <clears throat> okay. Um. Pardon my flakes. The, That's one, two, three, four, the, five, six, seven. The number sixty-nine ball in the lottery machine. Yes, sixty-nine. What, what about this Coach O, Coach O poster? Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Stop. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, we're good. No, give us one second, and okay, we got it. All right, Big T, just don't don't have it be the seventh thing. 
Okay. Do it first. All right, Avery, Avery, we're good. Avery. I can go get him. Yeah, go get him real Wait, quick. Wait, Billy's computer just made a, a honking sound. Interesting. Mm. He's not connected? It went away. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're good. I mean, let's just, let's be honest here. The fact that Billy got it the first time is impressive. I, I, I want to know how he got it, honestly. I, I think I know. I think, I, I'll i guess after he gets this one wrong. No, but uh, we told him he knows. Do, we we, told, do you want to know? We told the listening audience as well. Yeah, I want to know. All okay, of you on. have to know. Hang on. Okay. We know. I know exactly what it is. But Avery doesn't know, so text, big T text I'm Avery. texting him. I know exactly what it is. All right, you ready, Billy? Yep. All right. That wool light can over there. Wait, wait, no. I didn't choose you. I no, it's to, me. It's me. I have to choose. No, you don't choose. I choose. The wool light can, the part no, 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 of my no, cheesesteak no, no. sign, big tea, big tea, big tea. my headphones, no, no. PFTs. No, no. Billy, you can do it or not. Do you, big T, this? I'm the only one. Uh, no, it's I me. Guess, I guess a magician never reveals his tricks. Let's move on. Oh, so when it's someone who he can't get it, he doesn't do it. <laughs> Billy, you you should have just taken a guess and seen if you could have gotten it right, yeah. other than admitting that your tricks are faulty. No, you, does everybody know? It? Yes. yes. Yes, we know exactly. Yeah. What okay, it. I'm going to choose. I'm going to choose. No, someone. no. And honestly, I think all of you are. So Avery was like watching me the whole time. Yeah. I'm going to choose Avery because I think you guys are up to something. Because <laughs> how would he know? What if we're trying <laughs> up to, to something? You? Meaning you can't do your bullshit? No, just like we're tr for the sake of for the sake of it. Let's just go. All right. Okay. Do your. It doesn't count, but go for it. Sure. Okay. Sure. Well, like, let, Avery, yeah, let's okay. go with Avery. All right, Avery. You want me to do? Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Wait. Hold on. I thought you was outside, Chris. How would you know? Well, Big T texted me. Oh. Okay. Bet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. The game time sign. Uh huh. The basketball. The. Don't cut that picture, out. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Picture of Coach O. The uh -huh. SpongeBob statue. The. Uh -huh. Barbell, the pardon my cheesesteak sign, the uh -huh. um, helmet. Wait, wait, the pardon my cheesesteak sign behind, beside, behind you? Right behind me. Okay. Um, the helmet, the poster of the dude from, uh, what's the name of it? Oh, uh, yeah. Tiger King, the Scorigami shirt, and the camera next to Big T. Okay. I think that's 10. <laughs> I'm gonna go. Part of my cheesesteak sign. Billy's magic, dog. Oh, wait, I love it. no, it's because it, magic, a, dog. They both followed the same magic, formula dog. and done it. Not uh, okay. You wouldn't have gotten it I if it was it. me, and you know that. That's why you refused <laughs> to do it. I love okay, it. you know what? You know what? You know what? No, you we're what? not doing it again. I mean, I'm okay with one more time. It was one more time too much. And I'm okay. and I'm, I'm doing okay it one more time. You're doing it? If you do it one more time, I'm doing it. <laughs> no, we're not doing it. Though. Okay. So let's move on. <laughs> why, why are you afraid of Big T, Billy? I mean, you've already, you've dazzled us so far. Like, that's incredible. No, I'm, 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 we'll do I'm it with Big T. It's, it's, it's we'll, a mind we'll, trick. We'll do it with Big T. Do, why, why won't you do it with Big T? We'll do okay, it with Big Okay, we'll do it with Big T. All right. <laughs> All right, you got to step outside. I'll go watch him again. All right. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm actually hella curious. This I, is I, the most fun I've had in so long. This is pretty good. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually pretty curious. <laughs> All right, here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna. I have a list ready of ten to just rattle off so that he can't do. Because that's the. Anyway, <laughs> we're just gonna replace the part of my cheesesteak sign with something. So pick what you want. Wait, whoa, 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 what? Big T has the list. I have a list of ten things written down that okay. I'm just gonna rattle through. And so that he can't see looking around and all that shit. But I'm going to make it look like I'm actually looking around. So, but hold on. It's, it's going to be the same list? You're just going to switch the part of my cheesesteak, Joe? No, no, no. But he didn't read my oh. list. He didn't read my list. Um, oh, okay. So the same list we did. Okay. I think, yeah, I gotcha. I think it should be... Um, let's have... Do, do the, uh, the I, spaceship. The spaceship on the macrodosing side. I was going to do the hockey glove back there because it's directly in my line of vision. Oh, that's fine. Okay. All right. So you have a list? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. I'll text Avery. This is hilarious. Yo, if he gets this shit, it's going to be so funny, dog. I, I wonder what his tricks are. 
I don't know. I know. They both Actually said it on know. the seventh one, and Avery, it was behind Avery. I thought Avery, Avery did six. I might be wrong. Whatever it was, but he didn't look behind him. It was like he already knew that it was there. So that was bad uh, positioning. I know what his trick is. What is it? I'm not revealing it. Do you? Mm -hmm. He's listening? Nope. I'm not revealing it. Ready? Yeah. Got it. I texted just, I texted Avery. To okay. say it. I'm good. Yeah, it's that's like, the whole that's the he's it, not gonna it lie. would make me look okay. stupid if I didn't say and then say, oh, it was okay. something I didn't say. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's all I ask. All right, you ready? Mm hmm All right. Ten yeah. objects. Ten. Ten. Okay. That chair. Okay. Um, that can of wool light. That hockey glove. My headphones. Mm -hmm. PFT's headphones, uh, okay. the Leroy Memorial, RIP, good boy, that camera that's pointing at Avery, Okay. the box of Pardon My Flakes. Wait, which one? It's behind PFT. Point, point to the exact box. That box of Pardon My Flakes, it's How? on the game time this ticket. One, okay, yeah, I see it. Uh, the number 69 Lotto Ball. Can you see it? Yeah. I can see can it. Can you see it right now? Yes. Yeah, it's there. Where is it? Where is it? Big T just pointed at, at the lottery machine. Oh, that's, it's, uh, can you it, see it? it's 99. It's 99, but whatever. Okay. That lotto ball, uh, the poster of Coach O. Okay. And I think that's 10. Okay. Are you sure it's not in count? Pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. I'll trust you. If not the that <clears throat> guitar case back there, and you know it's not that one now. Okay, okay. Fuck, 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 fuck. If Billy gets this right, I'm going to scream. Fuck, okay, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Look at T. <laughs> Look me in my eyes. I'm looking. Fuck, <laughs> <sighs> okay. Wait, wait. You will look upon my face tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. All right, 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 right. That's season okay, look, one. Look, season look, one, look, Game of look Thrones. Me the, great scene. Look me in the eyes. <laughs> look me in the eyes. Look me in the eyes. And hear my voice through your headphones. I hear you, baby. Black hockey glove. Oh my oh God! My <laughs> Billy got it. <laughs> <laughs> He's listening. No, I watched him. We were all the way down the hallway. Oh my! You should have. You should have led with that instead yeah. of your other bullshit and stopped while Wait, you were ahead. On. I don't actually know which, which 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 one did y'all pick. I wasn't there for when y'all picked it. The, the, the hockey, hockey glove. glove. Oh fuck, you got it. Yeah, I think. <laughs> all right, so a couple options could be possible here. Oh my one, god. One, he's got a mole inside this room right he now. He for sure does. That's that's then one ex option. Then explain the. F how did I do it the first time? Then. You might have a mole inside this room. That's number one. Number two, there's a possibility that you have some of your electronics. That are capturing what we're saying. I left my phone in here. I want to check leave his time. phone. I, I left my phone in here the whole time. I'm recording I us. How would I record? I was look like. Oh, that's. Cool. I want to check Madeline's text. Mad dog. <laughs> What's that look, Mad dog? I'm. I don't like. Want to. <laughs> you can look at my text. Are you cheating, Mad dog? I'm not cheating. I feel like that's check a HIPAA text. violation. So yeah, you can check, check her, her fucking text. text. PF, hey, check I was text. born so, at night, but it wasn't last night. So this <laughs> is <laughs> this is <laughs> let's see this is what you dog. call this is what you call this type of mind control is called social proof and peer pressure. The the manipula ah, the manipulation of the mind is sometimes not done by an individual, but by multiple individuals. Those who attempt yeah, to manipulate yeah, large more. groups of people typically use social proof and peer pressure to brainwash newcomers. Social Religion. proof is a psychological phenomenon where some people assume that the actions and beliefs of others are appropriate and because everyone does that must be justified. This works especially well when an individual isn't sure what to think. So, Mad Dog and I had a code mm -hmm. coming into this. Mm -hmm. So you admitted you just cheated. I sniffed well, it out. Well, everything's, everything's no. a cheat. Everything's also, a, like, and Mad Dog wasn't see, lying when she said, I know how he's doing it. Also, can I say something? He only, and I, he and I only worked together on the first round. The other two rounds, I don't know what the fuck he did. Yeah. Well, that's yes. not true. No, no, the other, Mad no, Dog and I. You can look at my texts for that. 
Yeah, but so, it's a, he said he said you had a code. It's not in your text. Also, you would have also said that you would have said we did it the first time, but the second two I just got it. No, because the no, code, no, I didn't the code, do it. the code. The first time once I you did let it. people in on, so the code. This is what happened, and I got a little lucky. <laughs> Mad Dog and I, I sent her the exercise. The exercise is is that you need to have an accomplice, and you choose that accomplice first, which I sniffed out immediately. Right, but you were still like the whole premise of it is that. That happens in the the code was is that after what before whatever object they had to pick a black object. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Racist. Um, Seems that no, way. that's it's uh, a code. If we picked a white object, no. So then after it was the uh, you. Yeah, it was me. And then the second time. Uh, Avery and I were in the hallway. No way. And I let him in. And then he was my second accomplice. Mm -hmm. You son of a bitch. Oh. Yep. I figured. I like it. I like it. I expected that out of her. I expected better from you. What? And then then what about the last one? And then the last time. It was Avery again. Well. Had to be it. Avery couldn't say. Avery wasn't saying it. Avery wasn't here. Oh, that's right. So did you you just get lucky? Yes. (laughs) What did you do? He was listening or something. Hey, yo, he got no, the I had, fucking look on his face. I, I, honestly, I'm gonna let I'm gonna leave. The magician never reveals his tricks. I think I think it was Mad Dog. I think Mad <laughs> no, Dog. It no, wasn't. Mad it Dog. Wasn't. You can check her text. Can check she just text. knows about the the black object. Was it Arian? Hell no. I didn't have my phone. I couldn't contact anybody. A magician I didn't even never, know it was the hockey. A magician glove. never reveals his tricks, and I'll let the listeners. So basically, I'm honestly, sorry, it's guys. a great example of social they, proof they and went peer in, pressure. No, 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 no. You, uh, again, no, no, no. I, I went more on, last on. night. They went into the control room and were no, listening. No, I didn't go into the control room. Yes, you did. Avery, did we go into the control room? No. Like, actually, we didn't go into the control room. Anyway. Then what'd you do? A magician never reveals his tricks, Big T. Because well, it was going into the it, control room. It walked well, on water. Just have, fa- just have faith. Just have faith, bro. Faith. Just have faith. Have faith. I, want to, I want to do it one more time. And this time I want. No moles. No All the phones moles. in the middle. Well, yeah. Well, Everyone except me and PFT get out of the room. Yeah. I got faith in Billy. Well, well, I just told you how the first part of the trick goes. Walk on water for me, dog. Yeah, walk I'm walking on water. On water. I'm walking on water, bro. Okay. Are we getting out? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry I let you guys down. Get out. PFT and I are only doing this through text. <laughs> mm-hmm. okay. Okay. We, Wait, we all have to get out? Yeah, yeah everyone. Yeah. Okay. I'm Billy, see my, you. I'm leaving my phone. Yeah. No phone. Did Avery take his phone? Uh, I guess probably he can have his phone. Okay. Close the door. Go away. All right. Don't even say anything because they're going into the control room to listen. Okay. So you want to just point at things? We're just going to point no, at things. No, they can room. see us too. We okay. have to text. Okay. Shit. Well, that's not good radio, but it's okay. All right. I I mean, we we uh, you're right, but we don't start have a choice. An, start another group. Start another text group with just us three. Okay, okay, I'm on it. I'm starting the group right now. That's the real group chat. Real group chat. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going. I'm going to say. I'm going to say it this time because he sniffed Big T out last time. Um, so I'm going to just make a lit. I'm I'm going to look around the room like real fast. Okay. All right, the thing that Big T just sent me, and for the listeners out there, I guess we can't say it right now. Um, we can't say it. Big T, where's the thing that you sent me? Where in the room? I don't even want to. I don't even want to okay, do that. So, so I'll just. I'll, but, but that's not the one that we're going to use. Then I'll, I'm going to do the one that that Arian just sent me. Right okay. Now. Okay. So that's going to be our object, and then I'm going to say, I'm going to say ten, ten things. Okay. Okay. All right. And you can say all these that he's telling you? Yes. But but the, the first one he said is what we're going with, The first with, right? one Arian sent me is what we're going with. Okay. And, okay. Okay, bit. And I, sh- I, can't, I can't point at it or anything. I can't, for the people on YouTube, I can't say it out loud. Bro, okay, so, okay, I, I would say, I would say do that one first. Yeah. Because how often is it first? Okay, yeah, good call. It, don't say that. Okay, I'm not going to say it first. Don't do it. You can't. I don't know. We're so fucked now. Yeah, We're so fucked. Dude, Billy is We're so, so fucked. Billy is so in my head. Bro, right they're now. in the control room watching us <laughs> right now. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. How about this? How about this? How about this? I know. I got, I got mine. I'm not going to change it. Let, 
Let like, me go see where they are. Get, Let me go see where they are. Okay. Y'all keep talking. Don't you don't you think it'll be harder for him to read me than you? Because I'm not in the room. So you want to say you want to say the things? I'll say I'll say all the objects. Okay. And are we sticking? We're sticking with the. I'm gonna emphasize it in the group chat. That's the one that we're sticking with right there. I mean, he may have heard that because no, we didn't say it. We didn't. All right, didn't, they're not in no, the control we, room. They're out front. We so we never said okay. the name. Okay, so okay, let's. I, I say we stick with that. Okay, and then everybody send some more shit that's that way so that I can see it, so that I can I can point it out. I think it's I can I think it's less easy for him to hear uh, for him to read me rather I agree. than. And I swear, if one of y'all. Is, is I'm not. I'm, I'm a no, mama. I'm no, a mama. I know mama. Arian's not, but you would I'm just because you I, think it's funny. I, I am not texting Billy. And Billy's <laughs> Billy's phone is right there. You can check Billy's text if you want. His phone's on. Somebody's phone's dinging. Okay, well then look at, look at it. I want, I'm not going to look at it. Big T is not with the shits right now. <laughs> He's not fucking around. All right, they're all from his dad and pals. <laughs> okay. He <laughs> said... <laughs> 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 from his dad and pals okay his dad's like billy okay so, i hope you're not doing magic now <clears throat> uh where, where was that uh blue cup where was the blue cup oh don't say don't say anything where was it because because i gotta show him where it is you can't see it, it. we're just not yeah, gonna use okay. that one anymore yeah we're not gonna say that. okay okay we're gonna okay we're not uh, um okay i got this okay boom i hit you with that one yeah okay 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 um we gonna go uh boom okay i like the i like yours big t i mean i'm sorry uh pft um we have eight i think i only had look you got to put them all in here mm -hmm. Billy just got another text from his dad uh, okay that's nine we need one more one I more somebody it. text one more boom but uh, uh, I can't, I can't see that one. I mean, there's no way, uh, there's no way that he gets it. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. <clears throat> All right, send them in. Or right. let me, let me do it. I don't need y'all texting them. Okay, let's do it. Let's do, All it. Right. let's do it. Phones down. Phones down. Hands up. Yo, he's he's three for three right now. No four. Is he four for four? So no, the, he's one for one. The crazy thing but, is, but not even God. really that. Big T, Big T, he got us. It no, he was it. laughing. He was smiling, dude. He has something. The way that he got it the he third got, time he, is just. I think he, he got. I us. think there's some some bullshit that he's up to. The way that he got it the third time. Yes, there is. The whole shit is bullshit. But yo, we've all got got. Y'all gotta admit that shit. Yeah, but he admitted the first two. He just got told. Yeah. But the third one, he doesn't. He doesn't know. But that's also. But that's also part of his trick, though. Yes, his trick is lying. <laughs> that's his magic trick. Billy's one of the great, great magicians of our day. Hello, I can't wait till Big T. Comes I want to Billy us. to do some okay. of this shit to uh, our guest next week and see okay. what he thinks. Okay, that's gonna be lit. Are they ready? Let's go. Let's I ready. told him to come in. They're back, they're back in the control room, and so it's taken them a long time to get here. You think they really are? Mm. I think I think that's a possibility, yeah. That's one of the only ways he would have known the last one. That's tough. That is absolutely tough. I'm saying taking y'all a while to get back from the control room. Oh, how about this? How about this? Y'all gave me 10. I'm going to pick which one it is. Well, no, we all we have all, to know. We all selected it. Okay, okay, okay. That's a great. No, uh, okay, I'm so switching it because. because okay, because text us right now. I'm, I'm switching it. It's going to be this one. Okay. Wait, cool it, it didn't come through. It's a, it's an exclamation and a thumbs up that we just put on it. Got it. Just got okay. a thumbs up. All right, yo, yo, just, yo, hop out and go get them. Like, what are they doing? I, t I just texted them. Taking all a while to get back from the control room. <laughs> <laughs> okay can I, can I text them no yeah, them. no i'll go get them while we w okay Damn, what we if i did speech they're to devising text. their strategy they are they got nothing to do with us yo Aaron, is it you i put on my mama it ain't i don't lie on my mama doggy yeah I okay here they're coming back oh in. they don't have their phones there they go oh good I forgot about that good So 
our technology away. Yeah. I forgot about Let's that. That's it. on me. Let's do it. Are we ready? So here's what we decided. Uh -huh. I'm going to do it. Okay. And wait, does Arian know? Yeah, Arian knows. Okay. Does Arian know what? I thought it was Not just that. between PFT and Big T. No, we we let Arian uh, in on it. We oh, also no. started a group chat of the real ones. Yeah. Okay, this is gonna be hard. <laughs> Fuck. The real ones. Fuck. All right, you ready? Spill you up to it. Ten, ten. All right. Ten. I got. We got ten of them. Ten I got you. objects. Okay. Okay. Ten. Ten. Nigga. Ten. Okay, okay. All right. Look. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. First one is uh -huh. over your left shoulder. The Khalil Mack uh, little figurine jump. Got it? Okay. Okay. Uh, to your right, mm -hmm. there's... I'm sorry, sorry, to your right, there's a champagne bottle. The empty, the, the half-filled one or the filled one? It's the one. It's the full one. It's the full one. F okay. It's the full one. Okay. Uh, there's a lacrosse stick. I don't know in relation which that where that is to you. Can you can you point it out to him, PFT? Yeah, can I point it. Am I yeah. allowed to? Just yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, we, we, we in on this because there was a couple things that we okay. have in there that is okay. by the door. It's not okay. in my view. That's by the door. Okay. Okay. All right. There is a paint can. Yeah. Point that out to PFT. Which <clears> which one? Billy knows it's under it's the that couch. One. Is it the far one or the yeah, close one? The red one. one. It's the red one. This one the, right here. Okay, that one. The far one. Okay. Red jump. Red jump. Red jump. Okay. Okay. Um, over your left shoulder again, there's a basketball. Okay. Boom. There it is. Um, over to your, uh, across from you, there is a Trent Richardson jersey. Okay. Also, your dad okay. was texting you earlier. We checked your phone. <laughs> oh, you did? <laughs> yeah, he's calling you a bitch. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, uh, to your right behind PFT, there is a Josh Allen candle. Okay, right. So I got distracted by my dad. Why were you on your computer right now? Because I'm typing them Instead down. He's, he's, right, this, he's writing, he's writing, this, he's writing, I'm writing them down. down. I'm writing them down. Writing them down. One, two, Take three, your process. four, five, your... six, six. So the Josh, Josh Allen, Allen candle. candle. Okay. Yep. That's that should be that should be six, right? Uh, Josh Allen candle. Okay. Um, All right. Uh, one, two, there. three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. Okay, the seven. There is a blue cup. Big T, can you point him to the blue cup? Uh, right there. Right. Barstool the mug. Barstool mug? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, there is a spaceship on the macrodosing poster. Okay. Penis spaceship. Okay, one, two, three. And the okay. last but not least, uh, right behind your laptop, there is a pair of blue scissors. Okay. That is 10 objects. Okay. There's no Avery, you can, you can do that. You so can do that. Do, do, Khalil, do. Khalil Mack, full champagne, lacrosse stick, red paint can, basketball, Trent Richards jersey, doing Josh phone, Allen BT? candle. You just got a sound effect cute. Blue up. cup. Barstool mug, penis spaceship, and the blue scissors. <sighs> Billy, Dev he knows where it is. What? I can just tell that you're like pretending to be like, oh, I just do it. Just tell us. Khalil Mack bobblehead. Jesus Christ. All right. So what's the, how are you? What, no, no. If, you, if you'd solved it, you'd get it, but we're going to move on. What the fuck, Billy? Where's Arian? Oh, I, will, I will give you this. Where is Arian? Where is Arian? <laughs> I, will, I think Arian's the mole this time. Arian's the one in the control room. I will give you this. The, even though you're cheating, the fact that we I'm haven't figured cheating. out how you're cheating yet is I'm not mildly cheating. impressive. I'm using mentalism. <laughs> mildly using impressive. Mentalism. I mean, it's from, called mentalism. From Big T, mildly impressive is a, as good as a compliment as you can get. So what did he, did you, did one of y'all seriously? I think it's no. probably Arian. Has to be. Because he left. Should we kick Arian out and make him do it again? I can I can show you my texts from Arian. Everyone get out. Everyone get out. Okay. It's just me. <laughs> Everyone get out. <laughs> Everyone get out. Arian, Arian. Oh, shit is getting... Uh, uh, yeah, really I'm sure it is. Today, I'm sure it is, you bigger. son of a bitch. What'd you tell him? <laughs> got it. <laughs> he got it? Khalil oh, Mack. yeah, I'm sure you're so surprised. <laughs> listen, bro, listen, listen. Big T, I know you don't... You, uh, you're a super reasonable human being. 
on my mother's heartbeat, on my daughter's heartbeat. I have no communication <laughs> with Billy, doggy. All right. On my, my phone has been sitting right here, dog. Dude. On my mother. He got that shit? They, yes. So <laughs> am, I to, am I to understand that when you guys left the room, all three of you left your phones in this room? My yes. phone was right here. I, we know I Billy's was. Billy's was on his desk. His dad was texting him because we saw that it was Billy, text from his dad. Look at me. We saw, Billy, I saw me. Avery grab his phone Bro, when he came back. I, in here. I have no I communication with this nigga. I believe the, the nigga that I knocked on my you. door is hanging up my TV, the 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 hundred inch <laughs> TV. He's hanging that bitch up right now, and he's like, he was trying to get the Sonos password or some shit like that. Wait, your know. TV's but here? Like, yeah, it just it's, it literally just got put up. What it's a great a, day it is oh, for everybody on just this. Time for Avatar. Cheers, but my nigga. How did you oh, listen on oh, my mama, Big T? I'm not, I'm I not believe lying you. on my mama. I believe you. I'm not lying on my daughter. How the fuck did this nigga get this shit? This is crazy. A magician never reveals. Bro, his and tricks. he pretended for a second like he didn't know. I, I, I knew he knew it when he was like, hmm. Uh, when he starts to do the like mouth noises, yeah, he, that's really pretending a little too much. that he doesn't know. Yeah, he got y'all gotta have a. So there's a mad dog. It's I, mad dog. That wasn't. Does me. he mad have someone was, in yeah, the control yeah. room feeding him stuff? Like no. something Andrew? happened. Do you, we you want to go, go to the control room and see if we, we were talking to there. Ebony so, and Enrique the whole time? No, you wouldn't see. Uh, oh, you may have just outed yourself. You wouldn't have to step foot in there if you got somebody in there doing it for you. Mm. Well, go, <laughs> go <laughs> ask if so, we had no phones. Dude, we were standing. Go by the ask front Enri desk. Yeah, go ask Enrique. Enrique. No, I know y'all were standing there. We were so, standing yeah. there the whole time. All right. Anyway, let's move on. Mind control. <laughs> so typically, religions, cults. I mean, not religions. Like cults uh governments try to use mind hang, control hang, hang using on one a second, variety one second, of one second. Top isolation billy seriously seriously we can cut this from the show if you want and we'll make you look like a genius tell me what you did no dude magician <laughs> you found it's out not all the other, look you figured out all the other tricks and spoiled all the other tricks Big T, we're I, leaving this it, up to chance. i told you we can cut it from the show Big no T, here, here's where i'm at Billy was lying this whole time. Like he's got to be lying. Of course. I don't really. I don't want Billy to do like a victory lap with how he was lying and rub it in. I think whatever. Billy, just let him be a liar. All right. But how'd you do it though? <laughs> <laughs> Isolation. Physical. You know what? You know what? If Billy can pull this off for the mentalist that we're going to get into this show. Yeah, we're going to have week. you do this shit next week. Okay. For an actual mentalist, okay, and we'll see if if he can figure it out. Fuck, that's me. So he probably knows it. What he if Bill, what if trick. Billy actually can read all of her minds, and that's why he is the way that he is? Fucking lit. Then I'll, I'll back believing in God. Fuck with me, Billy. <laughs> Walk on water, homie. Billy is God. Okay, mm, let's no. see. Let's hold on. Come on, that's I'm okay with that. I'm okay with. Nah, well, I don't believe in that. So not I'm only sacrilegious, it. it's nonsensical. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that of all the people on the planet that could be God, I think Billy's in the in the top fifty percent. That's weird. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like there are three billion people out there that I would be more I mean, okay with so, than you. So Billy don't get a lot of credit for this, but dog, you're a very diverse human being. You have a lot to you. I mean, <clears throat> I could ask you about frogs. I could ask you about space. I could ask you about military. I could ask you about sports. Okay, Billy's diverse, man. I think we, I think we got to give him the flowers a little bit. Billy's a diverse. That's human fair. Being. Your flowers, Billy. Thank Billy you. contains accept... multitudes. So tell us what you did. So, dude, you don't get <laughs> the, to know. After, no, this is just punish. Like this is just punishment for spoiling my can, numbers tricks. Can you tell us after I'm, the show is I'm over? I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Um, we'll cut it from the show. No, I don't want to know I'll it tell, now. I want to know it after the I'll show. I'll tell you guys. After the show is over. But I'm punishing Big T. <laughs> Big T, hey, Big T be impressed. Make this shit so much You're more You're not going to tell though. me if you don't tell Big T. I'm not pressed. Big T and I are packaged. Okay. 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 Do not print this that is, I got pressed. I'm not pressed. <laughs> <laughs> this is ask, this is ask no, number I five. Actually, I six. actually want to get into the history of mind controls because it's really interesting because um, I'm going to find out. It originated <laughs> in... Uh, so what last name Daniel where did mind control originate? The so the the term mind my, brainwashing mind control originated in the Korean War uh, by the Chinese. So before that, people were definitely doing it for right, right, right. But, but the but the term was coined. Okay, the Nazis were big mind control people, mm -hmm. big like very evil, evil shit. But uh, the ways it sort of people get brainwashed and we saw a lot of this with scientology 
uh, was, you know, people being isolated. Physical isolation can be very powerful, but even when physical isolation is impossible or not practical, manipulators will typically attempt to isolate you mentally. So isolation, remember big, uh, PFT when you got sent to that seminar? Yeah, the landmark forum. Yeah, so listen to this. Uh, this may Isolation may be achieved in a number of ways, from one-week seminars in the country to criticizing your family and circle of friends. Yeah. I think there might have been a lot of actors at that seminar oh, trying there, to manipulate you. There might have been, yeah. Yeah. Um, criticism. And they were they kept adjusting the temperature of the room, too, to like keep you uncomfortable and keep you awake. And they give they don't let you talk to anybody. Yeah. And they tell you like, oh, your family's not going to understand when you tell them where you are, but that you're here for you. It was definitely a mind control thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it turns out I'm much like Big T, I'm unbrainwashable. Uh, criticism. Criticism may be used in an isolation tool. Uh, the manipulators will usually speak in us against them terms. So a lot of propaganda uh, is technically mind control. The Nazis created us versus them, uh, divisive um you know, bipartisan separation. Many political parties create bipartisan separation. Uh, not, I'm using bipartisan wrong. Bipartisan means cooperation. Mm -hmm. I'm talking bipolar separation. Uh, so you must be lucky to feel associated with one side. Social proof and peer pressure. We talked about that. Fear of alienation, mm -hmm. uh, you know, being rejected from a warm and loving group, being rejected from your tribe. Repetition, constant repetition is a powerful persuasion tool. It might be simplistic, but when you get something repeated a thousand times, it gets etched into your subconscious. Fatigue, fatigue and sleep deprivation. This is used a lot in torture. Basically, uh, you know, a lot of people have been tortured into mind control. You know, Hell Week and the Navy SEALs, we talked about the Navy SEAL who was able to do the haunted house really effectively because he had been basically mind controlled to not be mind controlled. Mm -hmm. I think sleep deprivation is a big part of it because oh, yeah. if, if you are uh, fatigued, if you have not slept in days, you're like more dangerous than a drunk driver. And you're also more susceptible to your mind being invaded. Yep. I, how, What's the longest you've gone without sleep? I See, I was thinking about that earlier today and I think it's probably like, I don't know, 48 hours. 54 wow. something like that wow you did that yeah i mean and you feel you don't feel like yourself at all at the end of it it's yeah. actually i wonder how long a human being could stay alive without sleeping mm. if you gave most is 11 days yeah oh really if you gave him like food mm. water all that stuff then you just go down what happens yeah I, I, let me days. look pull up the study you, you you like you like literally entered like psychosis hallucin yeah. hallucinations like uh you have like like seizures are are possible like your body need to sleep cuz that's what hey not to bring up this shit but it's hilarious jordan peterson was on joe rogan and he said he drank apple cider and that made him not sleep for like 20 28 days i think well, he no. said no his real what? problem was he's addicted <clears throat> he was addicted to uh to but no that was his clay i know yeah. No, that, that's obviously what was happening. Yeah. But he said he did not sleep for 20 some days. It was like, bro, you'd have been dead, fam. Like, yeah. he because, lied. because he drank apple cider. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, this shit up. It's hilarious, yeah. though. <laughs> but, like, the thing is, when people get addicted to certain sedatives, and, you know, like, for example, I, didn't Edward Allan Poe died of delirium tremors? Edgar. Ed Edgar. Edgar. They don't really know. That's actually something that's his death is still unsolved and they'll probably never solve it because he was running around and they, outside and, they, and then he hit he'd, his head he was having like a he'd psychotic he the owner he the owner of the baltimore ravens edgar Allan poe that was fun <laughs> <laughs> that is a, where uh, the name comes from right yeah yeah, yeah he wrote that yeah he, wrote, yeah. he had a psychotic it was a bad it's a bad joke some some think it was delirium tremens and he couldn't sleep and some because he needed booze some people think he had it was ether he overdosed yeah. on ether but uh, the reality is nobody, Jay -Z. nobody really knows. Also, yeah. he's another uh, married as like 11-year-old cousin guy. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Randy Gardner sleep deprivation experiment. He went 11 days and 25 minutes without sleep. Whoa. In 1963. That's, that's I wonder crazy. how he... I wonder how I've done like he, a day uh, and a half. I've done a day and a half. I've done sure. two back-to-back -back nights. It's tough. It's it, it is like it is tough. Like like you start to feel like your chest starts to feel heavy. You get like hella woozy. It's 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 not fun. I mean, I mean, it wasn't a real two back to back nights, but I did lay in bed both of those nights, but didn't really sleep. It was finals. It really back to back. Said, were you finals. on drugs, Billy? 
Just the good ones. The educational <laughs> drugs. Yeah. Um, um, I'm trying to find the tweet, but somebody somebody here at Barstool said, what if when you fall asleep, you're actually, it's just your brain downloading tomorrow's episode. Whoa. And I, I was like, whoa. That yeah. fucked me up. I feel like that's something Quiggs would say. Simulation talk. Yeah. It might be. What if it's my girls? <laughs> yeah. So this what is happens like, when you I, don't go to sleep for a day. Yeah. Uh, you. That's when the episode starts to suck. <laughs> the writers <laughs> run out of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so the guy who stayed up for 11 days, he slept for 14 hours and 40 minutes after the 11 days. And then he woke. That's not that much, actually. That's really not. I would expect more. Wait, Just one so, good night's sleep. Huh. So he then woke up. He went to sleep for 14 hours and 40 minutes after basically 12 a.m. And then he woke up at 8.40 p.m. And then he stayed awake. That, that doesn't make sense. Or it uh, depends on when they started it. And then he stayed awake until 7.30 p.m. the next day where he slept an additional 10 and a half hours. He had appeared to have fully recovered from his loss of sleep. Um, with follow-up sleep recordings taken one, six, and ten weeks after. But apparently later in life, he reported serious insomnia decades after his sleep experiment. Whoa. That is not good to stay up, man. I, I often think about this, right? The reason we sleep on this earth is because of the cycle of night and day. Right. And the cycle of night and day is merely because of how the earth tilts and how it rotates from night night to day. There are the majority of planets don't have that tilt. And so there are like forever sun or forever night on some on some places. And so um, it's interesting to see how like we we evolved because of the cycle that is the sun versus the non-sun so it's wild to think about huh so blind people in the so a guy once uh did an experiment where he did he tried to remove himself from the day and night cycle and found that the sleep cycle his body ended up taking was similar to blind people who tend to have 24 and a half hour sleep cycles as opposed to 12 hour sleep cycles whoa so stay up. So for they sleep for twenty four hours. Yeah. No way. Or is this a Billy factor? Or is this yeah. Not exactly like I, I get that blind people they're not able to wake up with the sun. That's not a thing. Because when you get out of your circadian rhythm, for most people the body clock falls. If at you're if you're hours. blind, and I wonder if we have any blind listeners out there, any blind macrodosians. But I I'm curious to know like when you wake up in the morning, have there been times when you wake up and you're you're not certain if you're awake or if you're asleep. That would be a big thing oh, for wow. me because for me, when oh, I wake yeah, up in the morning, yeah. it's like my eyes are open. That's what I use to recognize the fact that I'm awake. Yeah. How do you not know if you're in one of those dreams or when you wake up and you, th cause that used to happen to me when I snoozed, I would hit snooze mm -hmm. and then fall back asleep and then, uh, wake up thinking I was awake and go through my whole routine like brush my teeth yeah, and then I'd actually wake up and I'd be so bummed out that I didn't actually do all my routine. I think it's a matter of, that's interesting. I think it's a matter of if uh, somebody, a lot of people that are blind have limited eyesight and yeah, so they can probably detect light. You can see light. Yeah. And Shadows. But if you're, like if there are, there are some pitch black. Yeah. yeah. If you're completely blind, blind I or wonder how that works. if you had like your eyes removed for whatever reason. Okay. Yeah. I, I, this is definitely an important part, but I, I trivial question that i feel like needs to be addressed because my shorty puts on her alarm like she's a school teacher <clears throat> she gets up every morning she goes to work god bless her heart she's amazing but dog she leave the house seven seven o'clock her alarm goes off at 5 30 and she has alarms set all the way until she wakes up around six 30 so she has like alarms for an hour straight That's what I and i told her she was fucking insane am, am i bugging because i have one alarm it wakes me up and i do what i have to do but to wake up like seven times in yeah. an hour would be torture to me like that's, who that's my that's, that's too what many I do. times that's what i, I do. seven times so i have like five 
five is a lot. There was That's a, insane. There was an alarm. I forget where I found it, but I once bought this shock bracelet alarm that would shock you to wake you up because it was supposed to condition you to start waking up that time without the shock. I was doing it during football camp. <laughs> yeah, everything you do is extreme. Does that like work? Yeah. Pavlov's it, dog? It, yeah, it, it ended up working. <laughs> like what? Because it, but then there was a there was a setting on it that uh, tracked your you know your REM cycles through heartbeat, mm -hmm. and then only woke you up so you choose like a thirty minute period. I had from that. six to six thirty, and then it wakes. And you up. then it wakes you up when you're at your most awake. So you know when you sometimes wake up and you feel good. And then you wake up and you're like deep in sleep and it sucks. It tries to wake you up at the best time. And that sounds like a bunch of junk science to me. No, no, but like there's, you know, so for example, you know, when you wake up at like, uh, like sometimes, so for example, when I wake up at 6 a.m. on a good sleep cycle, I feel better than if I wake up at 10 a.m. Yeah. So that's because your, your cycle is at like the closest to the surface. Mm -hmm. at like 6 a.m. but then it gets back into another cycle and then you come out halfway through your deep cycle at 10 a.m. Okay. I get so. that. No, I get that. I just, it seems to me like a bracelet wouldn't necessarily be able to track that as accurately. Oh, well, like, like it's it's good. It's good in theory, but I'm saying like in practice, sometimes those sorts of like wearable technology things, like the, the technology is just not completely there yet, you know? Well, your heartbeat is indicative of your of your sleep patterns. Like you, you get into be. a lower heart rate when you're in deeper sleep. It can't, I'm just saying, I don't know if it's perfect or not. Right. But nothing. And is. I would also get, but, I would get pissed off wait, at my, let, my bracelet for trying to wake me up. Let's get back to mind control. Um, I'm trying to mind control. Wait, hold on, wait, hold on. I, I just want to get, I kind of get a sense. What is the acceptable amount of time before you actually have to get up out of your bed to when your alarm goes off? I'm at like, Five minutes tops before it's like you are torturing yourself. Yeah. Where, where are you at with it? Oh, I have my alarm is an hour before I need to like get up and get dressed. See, see to me, that's just that's a long time. That's wild. That's a long time. I like time. to ease into it. I, I mean, it's smart, but it's also a long time. I, I could never do that, I don't think. But, but, but like, can you get back to sleep after the first one? Like, I can't really go. Like, if I'm up, I'm up. But wait, Big T, you set you set your alarm and then you sit in bed for about an hour before you get up. So I have two alarms. They're 15 minutes apart. The first one wakes me up and then sometimes I'll like doze back up and then the second one like I'm up. And then I just like to like dick around on my phone for a little bit and shit before I need to leave. I mean, that's smart because sometimes I dick around on my phone and it makes me late because right. I don't build in that hour. Yeah. So honestly, something that I've started to do, which is really bad. You know how blue light keeps you awake? Yeah. So some reason in my head, I feel like I have to, you know, my alarm goes off and the first thing I do is I pick up my phone and I start scrolling, mm -hmm. like start my day, find blog topics, possible TikTok ideas, uh, just like consuming content and getting that bright light in my eyes to like wake me up in the morning. But it's definitely not healthy. No, it's not. But we all do it. But I try to like, I feel like that wakes me up better than like. I knew a guy that, or I met a guy, I should say, that he um, he would wake up at the same time every morning. I think he woke up at 5 a.m. every morning for like 40 years, never set an alarm. He would, But he would always wake up at exactly that time. And sometimes if he felt like snoozing in, he would just close his eyes after he woke up at 5 a.m. And then he would count to 67 times and then get out of bed. That would be his snooze. It's like internally counting to, to seven minutes. You know what I've found in the last couple of years? If I have a flight that's at like 7 a.m., I I always have alarm set and I always wake up before them. If it's a flight, if it's something I need to be at work early for, whatever, something important like early in the morning, I wake up before the alarm every single time. And it's always like pretty close to it. Um, But like my brain just like won't let me you're still kind of thinking about it while you're asleep. Cause I'm always, I'm very, I'm early to everything. I'm very paranoid about being late, especially obviously like a flight, something you have to be there for. And so if it's early, I will always wake up before the alarm. Hmm. No matter how early it is. I've woken up at four in the morning before. It's your mental clock. When I needed yeah. to be up at like that's, five. It's a good quality to have. I've only that. really noticed that in the last year or so. I'm, I'm usually pretty good about something like that, but I think 
as I as I get a little bit older, I'm starting to lose my touch on it. I used to be like you, young T. I've and never missed a flight. Now I found myself waking up for flights like at the at the exact alarm. Only I, time I miss a flight is when I'm faded. But other than that, I'm pretty. I good. haven't missed but, a flight, but, 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 but I flight. never. Well, that's that's a streak. I'm very you don't proud put of. Them, you you don't put them back like me, Billy. Oh, we were we were in Tennessee together. <laughs> Uh, Billy, I mean, we are, have a good, we have a good time. We do, we do, we do. We do. <laughs> Billy we is big time, time jinxing himself right now. I know, but huge, I always knock huge on. jinx. Honestly, the only times I do, I never miss stuff from sleeping in. I miss stuff from doing other stuff that I wake up to do, like working out. Like working out, like today, I was kind of late. You miss, you miss the, an entire podcast. That was because I didn't know. I woke up dazed and confused and didn't know what time the podcast was. Not because I didn't wake up. And you missed our entire photo shoot that we had. Right, but that was because I was repping. I was yeah, earlier out. today. I was yeah. I was chasing a pump, and it got pretty awesome. Sometimes when you chase a pump, yeah, I got a free. I got you know Christmas you lost. ass baby. Oh, I got lost yes. in the lost. In the you got lost in the pump. All right, so mind control. One of the more interesting types of mind control in my mind is uh, how you can flip mind control and try to control the mind of an algorithm. Whoa! You can make the argument. That you can you can do mind control against YouTube or Google or Twitter or Instagram simply by feeding the algorithm false information about yourself. And depending on how sentient you believe that robots and computers are right now, you can make the argument that you're controlling a synthetic mind. So if you want to fuck with YouTube, what you can do is you can start just liking the most random, let's say like, you want to get really into what's the most boring part of YouTube? Do you think that you can or the weirdest part? Paint dry YouTube. There's, There's definitely I, a paint drying YouTube. Definitely paint drying YouTube. If you start like clicking on, uh, on the thumbs up for paint drying videos, you start watching a lot of paint drying videos. Subscribe to a couple. YouTube is going to be like, Yo, people are really starting to like this paint drying concept. I'm going to feed you more paint drying concept. It's conditioning. It's actually, it's classical conditioning that you would use like on a dog, but you're conditioning the technology to respond to certain things about you in different ways, which I think is kind of fascinating. I I do this on TikTok because I use TikTok's part of my job. I need to find catchy trends that get views and get interactions. So a lot of trends and stuff pop up in my feed that I dislike. You can actually go, if you go to like the share tab on a TikTok, there's a button that says, I don't like this or mm-hmm. dislike. So whenever like the pro- provocative dancing pops up, uh, this is only on the part of my take account, but I've curated the part of my take account to only show trends. So like- I guess said provocative dancing. You don't like pr- provocative dancing? Not when I'm looking for trends to- Nobody's trying to entertain clients. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't mind provocative dancing. But something but the thing is the algorithm you'll Pump. watch it then it just then it's just that's cuz I I'm a I'm a young male it just bombards me with the provocative dancing and it, it tracks your eyes it knows where you're looking so it finds more stuff like that. Wait, does it actually track your eyes? Yeah. I think so. The stuff that TikTok has is uh like the most invasive that any app has ever gotten information. So like the ever. camera tracks your eyes while you or how is it I don't know eyes? that for a fact, but that wouldn't surprise me at all. It tracks I remember an article, I forget where I'll try to find it right now, but the the stuff that they have on you like they have every keystroke you've ever put in your phone. TikTok does? Yeah. Wow. The Chinese government. Yeah, the Chinese government's just bombarding me with people shaking it down. Mm-hmm. But anyway, uh, you know what actually is really cool? There is a parasite that brainwashes, like mind controls. People. Oh, how's that work? Toxoplasmosis. Oh, I think yeah. I talked about this before. Um, toxoplasmosis is a parasite that can turn a normally risk averse mouse into a bold cat seeking rodent. So, this parasite has manipulated cat and mouse attacking each other by uh, breeding in cat poop. And then the mice pick up the parasite through the cat poop and then end up getting this parasite that makes them. Uh, Oh, people, um, this is actually like, you have to be careful of this. Uh, like if you're pregnant as a woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, basically in the things that affects humans, 
because the mice become risk averse and will literally run up to cats and like try to fuck with them. They lose all fear. And they found that people who uh, contract toxoplasmosis are linked to rage problems. So people with the psychiatric disorder known as intermittent explosive disorder or IED were twice as likely to have a toxoplasmosis diagnosis than healthy, healthy individuals with no psychiatric diagnosis. Interestingly, uh, the decreased fear uh, may also have advantages. So there's this person called Fitza whose work showed that entrepreneurs that are more likely to be infected than the general population and entrepreneurs with the parasite tend to earn on average $6,000 more per year than those without it. In one study, he and colleagues tested 1,500 biology and business studies students at a major U.S. university. The results showed that business majors were 1.4 times more likely to test positive for the parasite than biology majors. And within business majors, those specializing in entrepreneurship were 1.7 times more likely to test positive over students in less risky business studies subspecialties. Hmm. In a lot of motorcycle accidents, people who die in motorcycle accidents, a lot of them uh, test positive for toxoplasmosis because of their risky behavior. So, so where do they get it oh, from? They get it from cats. So if you have cats, it's like the domino meme. Yeah. Like owning a cat, domino, 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 dying in a motorcycle accident. Or becoming a very successful entrepreneur. And yeah. It, it, <laughs> so the two roads diverged in a in a wood. <laughs> there was there was some there was some like I think this was on Joe Rogan like a couple like years ago, but like MMA fighters were going to contract toxoplasmosis to like Intentionally? Intentionally. That, that rocks. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, I I th once tried to contract it a couple of years ago during the pandemic, but the pandemic amnesty may have been a bad bit. Uh, and I can, think I actually did. But anyway. Can you ever get rid of it? I think after a couple of years. You think? Yeah. But uh, it's just so interesting. So, so which, which, which begs the question, <clears throat> what are y'all's thoughts on free will? Because we're talking about mind control, right? So, what, yeah. what is your what is your thoughts on free will? I think that in our the the minute decisions that we make in our everyday life, we have free will. But I think that you are by and large a product of your environment um, and all the the myriad of choices and different paths that other things and other people have taken to get to this point in time. Does that make sense? Uh no, a thousand percent. I don't. I don't too much disagree with that. Other than I would add the variable of uh, your DNA. True. Like whatever your ge whatever your genetic makeup is, plus the environment that you're raised in, I, I, and that's why I don't really believe in free will. Yeah, honestly, um, there is, that that is an argument. Like your DNA causes you to act a certain way, and then the environmental factors are explained by the people who chose to go there, who are also in your DNA. Hmm. Whoa. I, it, it's a very um, deep topic. And, that, and so when we were talking about like mind control, uh, I mean, in philosophy, like a lot of times we study like, what is the mind? Like, is it separate from the brain? Um, Descartes was, was famous for that. Like, do you separate the mind from the brain? <clears throat> some people do, some people don't. And it's, it's, it's a subjective field, hmm. but um, it's a very interesting topic that, um, because there was this dude, uh, I think I may have said this on the podcast before, but there was this guy, I think he was in Austin, who um went on a shooting spree. And after he was done, he told the police, or I think he wrote a note or something yeah. like that. He said, Examine my brain. He's like, Something's wrong. Examine me. Because like there, something's not right. And when they did, there he had a brain tumor pushing on his I think it was either amygdala or medulla oblongata, either one, which causes like extreme rage. It it, it made him be extremely like violent, and mm -hmm. it was out of it was totally out of his control. Like that, like your brain is literally why you do everything, and you have a tumor pressing on something, yeah. causing er erratic behavior. Uh, I mean, that's a form of of mind control, like. And what is mine to begin with? I mean, this is a deep ass topic that I've spent extensive time yeah. uh, mm -hmm. thinking about. Yeah, that he climbed up to the top of the clock tower at the UT yep. campus and he started shooting people. And then 
there's a gun store that's pretty close to campus and people started running into the gun store and the dude just started handing out rifles and handguns and everybody in the area starts shooting up at this clock tower laying down like suppressive fire on them while the police ran up the steps and then they blast him with a shotgun that's fucking insane, pretty crazy bro. yeah wow Holy that's wild shit. yeah i didn't know the rest of that story that's yeah. wild wild that yeah. gun store's still there i used to drive past oh, it that, so 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 i mean let me ask you this pft yep <clears throat> you're, you're a thinking man i you know i posit you as a thinking man that guy takes somebody out that you know and you love mm-hmm and then you hear the subsequent story about how he had a tumor pressed on his amygdala. Where's your anger directed towards? That's a good question. Why are you, why are you shrugging your shoulders, Billy? I, I you answer I I, I, I I would I would have a lot of anger in that situation, and I think it would probably be towards his family who didn't encourage him to get the health care that he obviously needed well because there are other warning signs you don't just go from being a normal person to just being like oh this brain tumor today i woke up and it's making me kill people um there's probably some warning signs that were that were very clearly ignored by either his family or his friends or people around him my take is in that moment it's definitely short-term versus long-term reward system so in that high adrenaline moment, you're going to look for short-term reward, which is, and that reward is vengeance. You're probably in that moment going to want to kill him specifically. Yeah, but he's dead. But what's, he put, put the, put the specific, what's the specific situation? Again? So, 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 so he has taken out somebody that you loved and he, he died. He got shot by the So police. after the event. After the event, where's your anger directed towards knowing that he had a brain tumor that was pressing up against his uh, brain that caused, that we know that caused uh, erratic, irrational, and vengeful and hateful uh, behavior. Right. So, hmm. So then you have time to think about it and then you have time to. Huh. It's a tough situation. Well, honestly, tough. you'd 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 end up just being mad at the world. I don't I don't disagree with that. Because yeah. like, you know, you can't be mad at if you're mad at the guy, then you're like, well, people should have picked up on it, but then you're like, well, men mm -hmm. are supposed to internalize their feelings because, you know, thousands of years of blah blah blah, humanity, but that happened because hum humans had to, you know, have like protect children and blah, 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 gender roles, dating back to hunter gatherers, animals, saber tooth tigers, people got to eat. The world was created evil. Then you just get angry. Like then you just get angry at everything. And then you find Marcus Aurelius who goes, nothing matters. Everything happens. Mm -hmm. and your inability to control situations is what makes it beautiful. Mm -hmm. I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad. I mean, I, I feel like at, at some point you either you you have a fork in the road and you are saying fuck it it's all fucked it is what it is or or fuck it there's nothing i could do about it so let's just be happy with it that's marcus I think aurelius those are the, i'm sorry those are if the i'm going i read i i was sorry i'm going off about marcus aurelius thought this episode i just been reading a lot of it lately but like that's what it, that's what he's all about <clears throat> and it makes sense I, I, don't, I don't i don't yeah there's, there's a dude yeah. out there. So I, I listened to this podcast this morning Naivete. With, with a guy that, that firmly believes in reality creation. And by that, I mean, this guy is totally insane, but he believes that through his own mind, he can manifest things and he can manifest everything. So in this one episode that I was listening to, he lives in Florida and a hurricane was hitting Florida and the news was saying, get out. This is dangerous. This is a, a once in a century type storm. And he went to bed thinking to himself, everything's going to be fine in the morning. My house will be fine. I will be fine. And then he woke up in the morning and some of his neighbor's houses were destroyed. His house was fine. His house was, was good. His car was fine. No flooding. And he believes it's because he told himself that everything would be fine. And he's like, everybody else, if they just did this, then they could avoid natural disasters happening. And he has not, he's never gotten COVID. He's never gotten the vaccine against COVID and he's just telling himself it's because like I'm telling myself I'm not going to get COVID. When I see it on the news, I just think to myself, 
you will not get that disease. And I haven't gotten it. And it's like, this dude is going to die in some weird, horrific fashion. <laughs> and yeah. like, he's, everything's going to come up bad for him. This is the very definition of living like a very sheltered, privileged, comfortable life yeah. where you're just like, no, bad things don't happen to me. And it's because I think to myself that bad things won't happen, that bad things actually won't happen to me. There is, there is, so you read a lot of books, right? Especially like sports and motivation books about mm -hmm. like uh, visualization. Yep. And that's almost in the same vein. Yeah. And like, there's this one book called The Power of Positive Thinking. Yep. That also mm. sort of trends in that way. I think there's some lessons that you can take from that. Yeah. But I feel like yeah. that only works when you end up, when you're lucky. Yeah. So for example, Donald Trump's a big subscriber of The Power of Positive Thinking. And yes, the, <laughs> the guy with a millionaire father from New York ends up having very, a lot of success, be it by his own merit or not and yeah. he accredits it to his positive thinking and you know creates this positive persona that caused him to keep seeking out uh like more uh, and more, more and more where, where does he go now uh the presidency well after no, again no, I, mean, I mean like he ends up going for the presidency because he just keeps going and going and going but like where does trump go now that he's got like he was president where else do you go uh like why, he, why, why is he get involved in the World Economic Forum? Just you know, ruler of the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because like, okay, imagine you're Trump. Your entire life has been building up on things, right? So you've you've gone through business. You've had various level of success, but you've been able to spin everything and say like, I'm a great businessman, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you had a great TV show. He became a national celebrity. He parlayed that into being fucking president of the United States. Where, what happens now? Where a man like that? There's nowhere to go. You can't go up anymore, right? Nah. It's you think he's he's not gonna retire and just like be happy playing golf all the time. Nah. Kill yourself, it's, it's, go it's, to it's hell, depression, fight it's the depression. devil, <laughs> kill Satan, kill yourself, go to the hell, go fight Satan, fight Satan, yeah. beat him, recruit an army of fallen angels, invade heaven, kill God, become God. Yeah. That's kind of the I think that's, that's the game plan. Fucking... That's probably the game plan, right? <laughs> like, yo, dude. <laughs> or or it would be very funny if like one of the most liberal people that you know like off the top of your head uh rachel maddow big t uh -huh. rachel maddow dies and she goes to heaven and donald trump's god that would be funny we have a wonderful <laughs> sure here. it'd be a great skit be be, great behind skit. these pearly gates <laughs> it's just mar largo <laughs> well no she gets in she is allowed in do you think would rachel maddow want to go to heaven if so, Donald Trump was God, I th I'm down. It's definitely a like-minded people go to like-minded places type thing. Yeah, probably because like, you're right. Like if, if a conservative person went to heaven and it's like, hey, Hillary Clinton is God, they probably wouldn't like that very much. Like hell, hell's a party. Yeah. Hell's just- Hell you know, seems like way more fun. It's way better. Heaven needs a better marketing rep, I think, or a better PR person. Right. Well, you know, it's, I agree. Heaven's desirable it's to people who want to go to heaven and are working towards heaven. But I think a lot of people's image of heaven is is boring and no fun. But I think it's like, like, can you fuck around? Can you get in trouble in heaven? That's my big question. No, because you don't want you don't to want do want trouble. To. But trouble is fun. Yeah. I, I like doing hood rat shit, with my friends. <laughs> yeah, but like in heaven, I don't even. You know, let's let's see. mind control. So, no, am, I, like, am I wrong? Like. Getting in no, trouble is fun. I don't think you'll have that desire, though. I have 12 pages of notes, and we've gotten through one. <laughs> I would, I would, I absolutely have the desire to do bad. I yeah. absolutely have the desire. Doing like, bad like, stuff like, is fun. Think about, think, think about like, like, some of your best times are doing dumb shit and fun shit. Yeah. Getting faded with the homies. I can't get faded in heaven. There's no, there's no Jesus wine. He the, turned water to wine. I yeah, can't that, get faded. Yeah, there's tons of Jesus wine. Yeah, like and who, who he gonna say I can't if I have too much? Is he sending me downstairs for the night or am I like, <laughs> like, am I, like it's, it's a lot of like it don't make no fucking sense. I want to get faded with Jesus and just shoot the shit, talk to him like I talked to Big T today. Like yo, my nigga, like listen, I got some questions, dog. <laughs> what you do to those kids? <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> you were wild as a teenager. <laughs> Yo, you you pushed that kid down the stairs. Did you? He goes, yeah, Dave. I brought back to life, though. Your dad got you out of that mess. <laughs> You're the biggest <laughs> nepotism advocate ever. It's like my dad's a lawyer on steroids. My dad's God. My dad's God. Uh, 
I would like to do hood rat shit still. I would like to get in trouble. Get kicked out of a dog show. You can't get kicked out of a dog show in heaven. It's all this, all the small things that you do. The, the variety in life makes it worth living, I think. Uh, there's another technique, Bill. You said repetition earlier. Yeah. It's a good form of mind control. What about rhyming? <laughs> things that rhyme. Catchy. Catchy things stuff. Things that are catchy is a form of mind control. For example, if the glove don't fit, you must acquit. Huh. It hits different because it rhymes. If Johnny Cochran had said, the glove didn't fit my client, therefore probable cause exists for you to find him not guilty. That Does that move you at all? It, uh, it gives, the rhyme gives my brain a little serotonin, positive feedback loop with the thought. Mm -hmm. I could see it happening. Yeah. It brings a here's whole- a, here's, a, here's another form of mind control, which you know is a, I think in the family of what you're talking about, is advertisement. Yep. Yeah, definitely. A advertisement is a huge form of mind control, man. It's why some of the richest companies in the world spend billions a year individually on marketing. What do you think we're being mind controlled about right now? Uh, look at your shirt, repetition. Mountains are blue. Mountains are blue. How many blue mountains are on your shirt? So many blue mountains. Like, But it's the product is 100% worth it. So going back to what Arian was saying about Billy being, you know, containing multitudes and having good thoughts and interesting points of view on things. Billy kind of gave Coors Light tens of millions of dollars worth of advertising with just by starting to repeat the mountains are blue. Say, yeah. say more. Are, I, I'm, I'm aware of this story. I'm going to wear this story. This, so, so the thing that we love about the blue mountains and part of my take is that they turn blue when they're cold. We're very simple minded mm -hmm. people. The mountains turn blue when your beer is cold. I've always loved that about Coors Light. And so we were very excited to work with Coors Light because the mountains turn blue when your beer is cold. And then Billy started tweeting out just the emoji for the mountain and then the letter R and then the blue emoji. Yeah. And that would be his thing that he would tweet out like every weekend, the mountains are blue. And then now Coors Light is tweeting out mountains are blue. And now this right here on these shirts, these are blue mountains that are in the silhouette of the mountain emoji that Billy started tweeting out whenever he was drinking Coors Lights. Like Billy, wow. Billy has, has his brain has, has given away probably $20 million worth of marketing easily to Coors Light. Easily. They can, easily. you know, it's fine. It's a great product. My father loves Coors Light and he found when the mountains turned blue, like back when it happened, yeah. he just kept raving about it yeah. and raving about it. So it's a very formative memory. Uh, <laughs> So now he's like, he's, you know, like my son. They, they still, they, they still, they still an IP from you is what they're doing. Well, no, I, not, the mountains turn blue and then like mountains are blue. Billy like, gave, they I never, just, they never ran with that until you did it. I'm no, 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 no. But the, what I'm hearing, the mountains turn they They developed technology that when the mountains turn blue, the beer, but did they run with that thought? They did, but they didn't. They didn't run with the idea of the emojis, the emojis of mountains and then blue until Billy and like, started to do it. You know, like just oh, taking a picture. I used okay. to just take a picture of the blue mountains like super close up and just tweet it. Well, yeah, we we were doing that too. I'm talking more about the emoji thing. Yeah, the emo like, I don't know. And uh, then just putting it. it, it was, I, I'm at, I am at it. Repetition works though. Billy's yeah. right. Um, So just some historical brainwashing. The weirdest things that used to happen in especially wars were you used to get prisoners of war that got, you know, Stockholm syndrome type stuff where they got brainwashed through torture and different means to switch sides. And this happened a lot in the Korean War. And that's, this is when the U.S. really started to study this and became the foundation of MK Ultra, basically. Yeah. So um, uh, basically, a bunch of the prisoners of war were manipulated uh, and defected to the Chinese side. And uh, basically they found that once they returned to American society, they sort of snapped out of it and returned back to normal mental well-being. Mm -hmm. It was more of a situation. Um, and it was just one of those things. So there was uh, Robert J. Lifton interviewed American servicemen who had been POWs during the Korean War, as well as priests, students, and teachers who had been held prison in China after 1951. In addition to interviews with 25 Americans and Europeans, Lifton interviewed 15 Chinese citizens who had fled after being subjected to indoctrination in Chinese universities. In his book, he found that 
the POWs returned to the United States. They're thinking soon return to normal, contrary to popular image of brainwashing. Mm-hmm. Um, Charles Manson used brainwashing. He might have learned from MK Ultra. Yep. By making the mind sort of uh, weak. In weak, I mean like uh, s- sort of unstable through the uses of torture, indoctrination, like or use of LSD, and then just repeating. It's easier to get thoughts and beliefs into a soft mind that's been manipulated by different stimuli. Yep. So the Chinese use torture in Korea. Nazis use torture. Americans use torture. Everyone tortured. It's, I mean, they sometimes got so good at mind control, you would get false confessions Mm -hmm. from torture and manipulation. So MK ultra, they're trying to find if uh, high doses of LSD were like a truth serum. And that sort of stuff. Uh, And it's sort of, you know, mind control happens in very minute ways, like pimps and uh, people who are being human trafficked. It happens to a lot Mm -hmm. where you have women, unfortunately, who are because they are at the behest of their pimps or drug uh, human traffickers, they cooperate and do things that they don't want to do because of manipulation yeah if you're addicted to a drug yeah that you will do anything to get the drug you associate certain activities certain things with getting that drug to get other people anytime someone does something to get other people to do what they want kind of manipulation and mind Mm -hmm. control i i kind of i look back at my years of athletics and i think arian might agree with me a lot of coaches use manipulative you know, techniques to try to make you think a certain way, make you motivate a certain way and get you to perform better or do what they want you to do. Would agree thousand percent. And sometimes and it gets fucked up in college. <laughs> absolutely. It's, it, I mean, yeah. high school. I mean, yeah. it's just, it's just the fact that you have, because uh, kids are impressionable and, and when you're young, you have a certain amount of, admiration to these adults that you think have your best interests at heart and a lot of the times they're just broken human beings yep. who are either living vicariously through you or uh, just trying to find some kind of glory for themselves and some kind of like validation for themselves and so it's not always the best intent and so a lot of the times um, the arena that is sports it's not just football the arena that is sports um lends itself to a lot of manipulation especially when big money is involved um yeah it can can get downright disgusting and i've seen it happen like so many times uh you know what another form of mind control is and uh maybe a topic for a future episode if we can get somebody like this to come on the podcast as a guest pickup artist i would love to have like a uh what do they call themselves seduction yeah scientist seduction expert master of seduction we have one here who Gl- glennie oh yeah glennie but he's a natural <laughs> yeah he doesn't he doesn't train for that shit glennie balls yeah he's, he's well, on that, a different level that's but, that's how andrew tate started his whole as a pua pickup artist yeah like you know top g this is top how you g. treat women and they'll whatever but there was that one guy who was home who claimed that he slept with a different woman every night uh to s- get a bed yeah Did you ever see that video no let me find it but i would love to have a pickup artist on the show to talk talk us through the art of seduction because those guys are they're kind of pieces of shit they prey on securities they do they do and they, their techniques are just i guess they help some people get laid like in terms of getting from point a to point b yeah i guess it can work but also the techniques that they use are very very dubious i would say unethical would be a polite way of saying it well the classic way they do it is they sort of you neg you say you you put them down yeah put them down yeah the compliment and then make them want your more compliments and approval compliments and approval they make you seek approval yeah yeah it's it's like kind of dirty shit but so they would say something like uh, it, what was the one? I, I remember I read part of the game like 10 years ago. And I think the first one was like, 
oh, you're so, you got this cute little Bugs Bunny overbite. That's so adorable. You say that to a girl, and then the, it's it sounds like a compliment, but the girl on the inside feels like stabbed by it. And so then she's like, oh my god, she starts feeling self conscious. Then all of a sudden, like you're in a position above her. It just well, it's really dirty. Well, the classic one. I don't want to sound like a douchebag. Say it. <laughs> Mad dogs. Say it, Billy. <laughs> so the classic one is that if there's like a a super super attractive girl who knows she's hot, uh, thinking, okay. you, you hate what? No, because I'm not someone that. What would you say to that person? Has this happen to them? Go. No, but you know the people I'm talking about. Yeah. And they manipulate men. Did you just call Madeline ugly? No. No, I. I'm did. saying you know what I'm. But he types right. of people he didn't I'm talking say. About. And Big T Trevor. Big T, bro. what? Big he, T, what? What are you saying? He didn't go out of his stir- way to say were, no, Madeline. You were stirring the pot right now, Big yeah, T. Yeah, you were stirring the pot. There's no hard. pot. There's no pot. I was just curious. Big T, I, I think Billy's talking about a woman who is spoiled, a woman who is right. Like who, uh, I was stirring the pot. Continue. Your who story. uses who uses, who uses their looks to get ahead to and get like ahead, that sort of to thing to get ahead, but also like manipulates men around them, like like the girls who get guys to do their homework because. They're hot, like yeah. that type of thing. That girl, yeah. Anyway, I once read like the way, like, don't give that girl the time of day at all, and don't react to them like other people react to them. I would agree with that. And then they become obsessed with why you aren't giving the treatment that everybody else does. Interesting. Easier said than done, though. It's like, have you seen that tweet where it's like, "Bro, I got her because of my whimsical charm." No, <laughs> it's like it's like funny guys get the hot girls. Well, have you seen the girls that David Spade has dated? Uh, I just saw one come up on my TikTok this morning. It's incredible. Is that money though? He got bread. He got, he got bread. Well, though, yeah, it's yeah. money. But yeah, dude, but listen, do you know? It is, not, it is not hard to get women with bread, bro. It is not hard. <sighs> yeah, but how this much? Guy, this how guy. much money do you think David Spade's made? A lot. David Spade network. More these celebrities. It's, not even, it's not even just money. It's the illusion that you probably have money. If they know you, million dollars. they own you. What? His net worth is got, according to bread. celebrity net worth. Now that's he's five seven. Good what what's the number? Well, I'm seeing seven. I'm what seeing the, sixty seven. What, 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 what five seven got to do with anything, man? No, I'm just saying, good for him. Short king. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm proud of him. This is no, 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 no. I want everyone to look at what PFT is doing exactly right now. This is exactly what Billy's talking about. What am I doing? You're like, oh, good for him, five seven and rich. That's like what boys do to super super hot girls. It's oh, like, I'm negging. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're doing exactly that. So by ignoring them, and by ignoring them, it might take more than one. It's not like it's not going to happen in one day, but like after consistent We're not putting up day. with their shit, mm-hmm. they end up obsessed with you because you don't you treat them differently than the all the simps. Yeah. Well, this rocks. PFT commenters net worth forty one million dollars. Shit, does it actually? Say Let's that? go. It's probably low. It's pretty, yeah, a little bit on the low side, but I'll take it. These <laughs> these websites make no sense. They don't. Does it but I feel like um, I'm not worth $41 million. I'm seeing $2 million. Yeah, there's one that says $41 million. I'm choosing to believe that one. <laughs> I think they're both on the low end. It's got, Can you I, take I, that to a bank? I say, think these celebrity net worth sites, They because last time I checked, it had both me and Big Cat being worth like $2 million each. I think they just think that part of my take the podcast is worth $2 million. So they just, or they might actually listen to us when we say we get 75000 an episode. But that you would get $2 million from that and like. How much would that be? I'm just curious. People were unit shaming me because I posted some of my bets. Yeah. Don't unit, don't unit shame. And I'm like, what? The, like, I'm not Dave. Por- like, I found I'm a 520 Por- million for you. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's more realistic. <laughs> Wait. Yeah, that's that's that probably 520 more. 520 right? million. Oh, my God. If you think if I if I had 520 million he dollars right now. He would be here right now. I actually would. I think it, you'd be Skyping it. You'd be Zooming it. Yeah, be, yeah, I'd be on yeah, Zoom. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be on Zoom. Zoom. I think uh, somebody asked me the other day, like, what, what are you going to do if you win the lottery drawing? Because I think it's back up to like 600 million. It's at no, 1.2 billion. 1. billion. Let's go. I would. Well, I, the take home would be like 600. Yeah. I think I would do my exact job that I do right now, except I would do it a little bit less frequently. Yeah. I think I'd do 
like maybe one episode of macrodosing a week and one episode of part of my take a week. Yeah. Whole building, ran out a whole building on the top of like some dope ass, you know, high sky rise shit and just rent that shit out and do it there. That would be lit. Yeah. That'd be cool. And and fly me private there every week. That'd be dope. Yeah. Runway on top of the building. Ooh. That That's impossible. Why? It's impossible. There's no plane unless I installed the, the wires and the hooks on there like a carrier. Yeah, like an aircraft carrier. Actually, that kind of rocks. That's how cool. That's or a helicopter. Cool. Yeah, yeah, helicopter yeah but, but then you can't land everything from everywhere. I don't oh. I don't like helicopters. Have you helicopters? Ever been in one? I mean, I have not been in a helicopter. Oh, well, after, you don't like heights. I mean, after rides. I don't think I will. After no, R.I.P. Kobe, no one really fucks with helicopters. Anymore. I was anti-helicopter before. Yeah. You know, it'd be a great time to do. Kick it to our guy Caesar. Yeah. We'll, oh, we haven't kicked it. To Caesar no, let's yet? kick it. Let's kick it to Caesar, not Marcus Aurelius. Did Caesar come before or after? Uh, let me check. Okay, Billy's going to look that up, but we're going to Caesar Milan, the Dog Whisperer. That's right, the Dog Whisperer. He is brought to you by Sport Clips. Sport Clips Haircuts has developed an all-new relaxing blend of chamomile, lavender, and eucalyptus for their hot steam towel. If you want to try this new scent, you've got to make sure and ask for the MVP haircut experience. It comes with a hot towel, massaging shampoo, and of course, a great-looking haircut. It doesn't matter if you're balding or if you have the noggin of a Sasquatch. Sport Clips stylists have been specifically trained to cut men's hair. They've literally seen it all. Just another reason why Sport Clips is the pros in men's hair. Now, here he is, Caesar Milan. We now welcome on a very, very special guest. I'm super excited to have you on the show. Because Thank you. I have watched you on television um, for a long time. You were a big influence on me when I was figuring out how to raise my first dog. And so you, uh, I credit you with helping me raise what I thought was a pretty well-adjusted dog. Um, it is Caesar Milan, the dog whisperer. You can see him right now. Uh, better Human, Better Dog on National Geographic, and he's the co-founder of the newest dog technology, the Halo Collar, which we'll discuss here in a second. That's right. Um, but you. that that right there, that was Leroy. That wow. was that was my English Mastiff, and uh, he just passed away about a year and a half ago. But I got him when he was a little puppy and about seven weeks old, maybe 11, 12 pounds, and I knew he was going to get to be this giant dog one day. <laughs> and I was like, I better be on my shit when I'm raising this little puppy because... I don't want him doing anything right now that he's going to do when he's 100 pounds. That's right. So it's like we had to be very strict, you know, no paws, no teeth on you, anything like that. And I read your book. Uh, I forget which one. It was. it was probably one of the first ones. Right. Read that cover to cover. And uh, it was it was very helpful. Thank so, you. So thank you for for what you've done for a lot of people out there. I know you've influenced a lot of people. Thank you. Thank you. You know what? The goal in life, you know, the new show is called Better Human, Better Dog. The goal in life is for me to help people to connect with a dog in a very natural, simple, profound way. So people arrive or achieve trust, respect, love, right? Because if you don't have that, even if you have love, you don't have a well-behaved dog, right? Because you don't have trust and respect. Mm -hmm. And the basics of every relationship, human to human, is trust, respect. You can have love, but if you don't have trust, you're gonna keep that person at a distance. Yeah, and I would imagine if you're a dog, you can, you can love your owner, but if you don't trust them, you're going to be anxious. You're not going to feel secure all the time. Well, confused. Confused, confused a little because bit. you're in an environment that is not uh, focusing on natural accomplishments, right? Everybody yeah. wants a dog to be well behaved, but the dog wants the human to be well behaved as well, right? Mm -hmm. So the one who needs the education is not the animal, is the dog, because they already know is the human, because the the animals already know what to do. Yeah. Right? So the only time they develop issues is when they come and live with us. Yeah, it's yeah. fascinating mm -hmm. to hear you talk about um, dogs in America right. versus dogs in third, world countries. in third world countries because you always say that dogs in America are the ones that have the most psychological problems. Yeah. But Look, physically they're fit. Yes. But in their brains aren't That's compared correct. to others. So what I say is dogs in third world country are skinny, but they don't have psychological problems. Dogs in America are chunky and I get to have a TV show. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So like it, it, a dog in America shouldn't have problems because he has health, you know, he has wealth. He has. Uh, he lives inside a house. He's considered a, fam a, a you know member of the family. That uh, dogs in America have rights. You know mm -hmm. what I mean. So yep. it's a lot of things that they have. But what they don't have on a daily basis is the exercise, which is extremely important. The psychological challenge, which is going to work, and then getting affection after exercise discipline. So body, mind, heart. So uh, an, an American dog is more likely going to get affection, affection, affection. 
right? Mm-hmm. So if you watch uh, an episode on South Park, I went and rehabilitate <laughs> Carmen, yeah, you know, with the same formula, mm-hmm. right? And and so that actually uh, helped a lot of people. Is what well, what Caesar is teaching is the same thing we need to do with humans, you know, exercise, discipline, body, mind, heart. That's that's what we need to grow up in a, in a balanced way. Yeah, I do that. I use some of your techniques on Billy too. <laughs> I, I do. I hit him with it. There Sometimes just redirect them in a positive Billy's direction. Billy's big. Billy's big. You get <laughs> Billy has to have a job to do. You know, like that's it's kind of the same way. If Billy doesn't have a job to do, he's like a dog, like a border collie that gets left in a house all day. <laughs> starts licking his paws raw. Oh, starts dude. chewing at the baseboard. I'm if I make him feel like he's animal, got a job, I'm more of a you know like he's a wolf productive. dog. You, know, you, go, you can't go. really train a wolf dog. That's a wild that's an hybrid. That's yeah, right. you can't, Billy you can't keep that in the house. Billy's a chihuahua that thinks he's a wolf. Oh, no, that's the issue. No, maybe like a Caucasian shepherd. Like that type of thing. Oh, so, that's a big. Very, uh, honestly, I've always I like big dogs. I have an American bulldog, 120 pounds, two and a half years old. Yeah. Honestly, your training methods were huge when I was training my puppy because right. it's like a lot of people are afraid to be not mean to their dog but discipline their dogs. Right. And then when I go to dog parks, I see other misbehaved dogs like like all these doodles and small dogs that right. people think they don't have to train, right. but they sometimes are the worst and then right. they antagonize other dogs. But um, my question is when you're talking about third world uh, dogs from third world countries mm-hmm. versus American dogs, are you talking about a lot of the dogs that are more outdoors dogs, like almost semi feral that run around or working dogs and uh, more uh, like not house dogs? Well, a farm dog, for example, yeah. that, that's a happy dog, mm. right? Cause he's every day he wakes up in the morning and he knows his purpose. Right. And and so they want to help someone. So so they don't want to drink water and eat. They actually want to go to work and then drink water and eat. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So that's a normal lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Right. Because animals wake up in the morning, they stretch, the birds fly and the fish swim and the dog have to walk. You see what I'm saying? So as long as they they can a- achieve their natural cycle in life, they're going to be fine and they're going to help humankind. It's just a dog that lives in a first world country. He wakes up and he gets breakfast. Mm. You know, and sometimes he gets to walk at 4 p.m. after the human come from work. So by that time, the human is exhausted and it feels guilty, right? Mm. So he's going to put a flexi leash and he's going to put a harness on the dog and the dog is going to be in front. So mm. when a dog walks in front of you full of that energy, he's controlling the environment and controlling the relationship. Mm. You see, so that's why in dog parks, so a lot of times people like to go to dog parks to, uh, to help a dog socialize. But if a dog is frustrated, <laughs> bored, it's pent up energy, what you bring into the dog park is that. So you're not going to have the social interaction that a dog should have uh, uh, because the dog is being inside the house. His life is not normal. That's my point. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. so it's very, very important. Now, when people come from work, um, I understand, you know, I can't, I don't have time. That's what everybody says. But when you come back from work, no touch, no talk, no eye contact, the dog is, has pent up energy. So do not greet a dog that has pent up energy. Okay, let him come down, get yourself together, go for a nice walk, put a backpack on the dog. If you have a, a, a large breed, put a backpack on the dog. If a dog wants to run, put some rollerblades, but got a bike. Mm. You see what I mean? You got to match the energy of the dog. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you can bring him to the dog park. And then you can feed him. You see what I'm saying? Because if you're giving food to a frustrated mind, you are nurturing frustration. You're rewarding that behavior. Yeah, you're rewarding that behavior. You see what I'm saying? So if you're not giving food to calm surrender state, you're actually rewarding anxiety, frustration, dominance, territorial. And you were saying about some people don't like the word discipline. Well, discipline is the only way you can go to the Olympics. Mm. You see what I mean? Yeah, put the practice in. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of people confuse in the dog world discipline with punishment. You see what I mean? So it's not about punishing the dog. Actually, you're punishing the dog when you don't walk the dog every day, when you don't let the dog work. Yeah. You see, that's punishment to the animal world. One thing I used to do with Leroy, we'd, we'd, we'd play with a, a tennis ball or a rope or something. As he got bigger, you know, he's 170 pounds, big teeth. They can hurt somebody if he unintentionally right. like puts his, his uh, teeth on you as you're holding a rope. If they would even like touch my hand while I would play with him, pulling the rope, I would just, I would drop the toy and I would just ignore him. That's right. And I just wouldn't look at him. I just walk around the house. He'd be following me around the house being like, come on, I thought we were playing. I thought we were playing. And I would, it, it felt kind of bad because you're like, you're making your dog feel guilty about touching you with his teeth, but it's a really effective teaching technique right. where most people like in America, I think they see their dogs when they get home or just at any point they see their dog, they just want to go up and like pick them up, cuddle them yeah. and spoil them. And that, that can actually be bad. 
for yeah. the dog's behavior, like real bad for their behavior. Well, every time you do an action out of guilt, it's not gonna be good for a human or a dog. You see what I'm saying? So that's why I'm always talking about calm, confident. So every time that I do anything for a dog is calm, confident. And when I reward a dog is love, joy. Mm -hmm. You see, so, so the four energies you should, you, you should use with animals, calm, confidence, to give direction, protection, and to give love is love and silence or hey, a, a joy, right? But most people like to do the excitement combined with the love and no calm, confident. That's what yeah. they hire me. Yeah. Because they don't know how to give direction, protection. Do people ever get jealous of you because their dogs like you more than they like them? Because um, on, on all the shows I've seen, you come into their house and immediately the dog just like, behaves right and you're able to use your the, the calm energy right. to like make the dog respect you a little bit and then you you form a very fast bond with the dog that that dog's never had with their real owner that's right do the owners ever are they ever like yo what's your deal man you just you can't come into my house and just take my dog well i have to show by example that it's not the dog right because everybody think you know it's the dog caesar i got a dog that you can't so it's never the dog because they don't rationalize Right, so when I come in, I, I give the dog what he what, what he doesn't get, which is calm, confidence. And then the dog responds right away because it's controlled by instincts. So there is no knowledge you know, behind instincts, it's all reaction. So the, the, their dog is gonna react completely different to me even though he just met me. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So that that's why it's important for, for them to see it's not the dog, now let's focus on you. Yeah, you see it? but so, no one ever gets mad. Like if you, I would imagine that like, there's a little bit of jealousy. It's like, why does my dog like Caesar more than he likes me? Oh, a little bit, but then then they then I teach them how to do it themselves, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Because it, it's and everybody is love joy and it's also calm confidence. It's just people don't use calm confidence with a dog, mm -hmm. you know. Like I said, to become an Olympian or to become an astronaut or to become whatever you want in life, you need some calmness. You need some confidence, right? That's yep. how you achieve things. And so we know how to do it in certain things, but we don't apply it with the dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the things that I've seen many a times you do in all of your shows is that even if they're like, let's say there's a dog attack, let's say a dog's almost yanking a guy off, uh, like, you know, off his feet, almost dragging people. But as soon as you get a hold of the leash, you're able to, the dog almost quits all of that behavior. Right. What is the first step, do you think, to, in Dogs You Just Me, what's the first step you take? Is it, I know we were talking about cool, calm, confidence, but yeah. active, like steps that even people who are, are struggling could take to sort of have that improvement. So the closest thing to what I do is how people walk horses, mm -hmm. right? So when they walk a horse, the horse is behind the human. So in my mind, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm already telling the dog, you're gonna follow me, right? So you have to visualize what you're going to do. And the dog senses something different. Then the second thing I do is I put the leash all the way in the top or, or, or I create a halter, right? Like a horse. Mm -hmm. And so, and so as soon as you put the leash all the way in the top, you remove the nose away from the ground, and now you're in control of the eyes. So now you have the eyes, the nose, and the ears. I'm sorry, the nose and the eyes, mm -hmm. right? So 60% of the brain is controlled by nose, 15% is controlled by eyes. And they're born like that, nose, eyes, ears. So when a dog is born, he borns with the nose open, 15 days later, they open the eyes, 21 days later, they open the ears, nose, eyes, ears. So I control nose, eyes. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then I tell him to follow me. That's it, and oh, wow. and that's what the that's what the brain is getting. Versus they, you want to go for a walk? Yeah. Like they put the leash all the way here, or they yeah. put a harness, you know, and then they go into explore mode versus follow. So it's three three activities a dog needs to do: follow, play, explore. I reward with play or explore, but I begin with follow. Hmm. You see, so just people can walk a horse. A kid can walk a horse because the horse is conditioned to follow before he plays or explore. Yeah. What happens if the dog's walking behind you, but then is stopping to sniff something and just kind of refuses to walk with you and just wants to keep sniffing? Because that's- move faster. Move faster? Yeah, disappear because he needs the pack. Mm -hmm. so, so the reason, the difference between a cat and a dog is that the dog needs the pack. Mm -hmm. You see it? So at the moment the pack moves away, you don't even have to say, let's go. It, he is, it increases a survival mechanism, right? So the worst thing you can do is call the dog in the park because he's not gonna come, the nose is in the ground. But as right. soon as you move away, the eyes are gonna look for you and then the nose is gonna go look for you. Mm. You see? Are Even there... when on a leash? Huh? Even when on the leash? Oh, the leash, oh, well, the only reason why he got distracted is, is because it's too much loop in the leash. Okay. You see it? So when a dog is in a follower state, that's all he's doing. Okay. So that means the leash have to be short, not tense. Mm. So if you watch what, how I walk a dog is short, not tense, two fingers on the leash and the dog stays you know, in a follower state. 
the best thing you can do for a dog is to take him for a long walk, focusing on following you, not focus on follow and uh, sniffing the ground. You see, because mm. that distracts them. You know what dogs are really well trained for the most part is dogs of homeless people. That's yeah. right. They're always like they they don't need a leash. They just follow their person around all the time. They're usually very calm from what I've seen. Yeah. I don't know if that's just because like the all the dogs that aren't good at following their owner, they just run away. But um, the ones that oh, I see. Oh, they're bored in their home. They're bored. Yeah. yeah the ones escape. that I see, they look very happy. That's and, right. And they all have packs. They have a job. That's a true. A lot of them wear like backpacks. That's right. Yeah. The, the homeless people have great dogs off leash. And then the people with disabilities, blind people also have a dog next to them. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So. So humans with disabilities, you know, humans who are, are blind and the homeless people are a perfect example of a dog following human. But one mm -hmm. is handicapped and the other one is homeless. But the dogs don't view them that way. The dogs are viewing them I'm following this human. So that's their back leader. Yeah, interesting. I, I read an interview where you said that humans follow instability. We're, yeah. we're, we're the only species, species that follow stable leaders. Like we love instability. We, well, like, we have learned to follow instability. It's and exciting, okay right? It. I don't know if it's exciting. I, I think that's all we've been doing for hundreds of years. Yeah. We're the only species that literally follow unstable leaders, you know, because in, in order for, for you to, to be considered a leader in the animal world, you have to be the most honest first. <laughs> you have to prove it first. <laughs> so in the political world, you're done. Yeah, you, you, have to, you have to actually demonstrate some sort of merit. Honesty, integrity, loyalty, pursuit yeah. of happiness, live in the moment. That's your spirituality. Yeah, it's like when you watch an old TV show or a show that, that's about like the medieval times, it's usually like a, a warrior becomes their king or their leader because everyone loves him and respects him. Right, because he's done the work. Because they've seen that, okay, this person, and that's how dogs operate. It's like this person is demonstrating the qualities of a leader, therefore I will follow. And then another another point of animals, which which we should learn, you know, at one point in life, uh, they've been following female or male, right? In the, in, the, uh, in, in the elephant world, they follow female source. And the bees, they follow female, and the ants, they follow female. So it has nothing to do with gender. It's who has the calm, comfort, love, joy energy. That's who become the leader, female or male. Mm -hmm. So um, I want to touch a little bit on your history, on your yeah. past, because I, I haven't heard you talk about it that much. But when you're growing up, um, when did you realize that you were able to deal with dogs in a way that maybe other people weren't able to do? And when did you decide to make that into a career? When I came to America. Yeah, I, I mean, I grew up watching a show called Lassie and Rin Tin Tin. So I thought all dogs in America were just like Lassie and Rin Tin Tin. <laughs> Movie stars. Movie yeah, stars, yeah. you know what I mean? Because I, I was a kid. I was a kid and, and I thought every dog in America was just like Lassie or Rin Tin Tin. So um, I never thought that dogs in Mexico were my teachers or they were totally fine, you know? And so I came to America and then I saw, you know, uh, people not being able to walk a dog. Uh, uh, you know, you knock on the door, get the dog, put him in the bathroom. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's mm -hmm. like that it was a big production for people to open the door. And, you know, when I saw people walking dogs, I was in then dog fights in dog parks. So I said, hmm, there's something here that is not normal. You know, and that's when I opened my first dog psychology center in South Central Los Angeles, where I started rehabilitating dogs. And people used to say, nobody's going to come to the hood. And that's where the show was born. Yeah. <laughs> In the hood. So, so when you were when you were growing up, the way that you would interact with dogs was yeah. no different from how, how everybody right else now. in your town would do it. Exactly. So, exactly. So, nobody has problems with dogs in our country. That's not a, health is a problem. Education is a problem. You know, political things are a problem. Food is a problem, but nobody has dog problems. <laughs> Why do you think that is? What do you think is it about Americans that make us so bad at raising dogs? I, I think they, they, they nowadays they move into a relationship with a dog from an emotional point of view versus knowledge, right? It's, it's so knowledge first and then it's the emotion. So when you give the emotion, it's a, for the right reason at the right time because timing means a lot. Even when you give a treat to a dog, it has to be at the right time for the right reason. Otherwise, you can actually nurture anxiety. You can actually nurture fear. You can actually nurture, you know, tension. Because I've seen a lot of people when the dog is shaking and they're petting him, you're giving affection to shaking. Yeah. You see it? Or they're trying to change it with a treat. You're giving affection to to a dog being nervous. You're nurturing that state of mind. Do you think that Americans don't show each other enough love? And that's why we, we crave it from our pets. We, we just shower our animals with affection because we don't do it enough in our day-to-day -day lives? No. Uh, I, I, well, I, th I think it's a little bit of that, you know, because a lot of times... Um, you know, I come to people's homes and, and I say, uh, it's my husband. And they talk about the dog. 
<laughs> but the mm -hmm. husband, the real like human husband is right there. I've done yeah. an episode where where a dog with the husband can't go in the bedroom because the dog will go after him. Yeah. You see, and, and, and that's, yeah, I know, I know. It's just, so yeah, it's like it's a, a little bit deeper, maybe. Than... It's a little fulfillment. I, I mean, the most typical word for a dog is baby, right? The um, dog is my baby, right? And and uh, and and the person has children, like human children, but they favor the dog. You know, I don't know if you remember the episode with Bandit, and uh, it's a little Chihuahua where this the her her children couldn't come close to her, and she will protect the dog instead of her own, which is not normal. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it's not normal not to protect your own kind. It's not normal. Right? Yeah, include others, but not not to practice not protection your own kind. Yeah, I think right. my favorite episode was uh, there was. It's probably been like fifteen years since I've seen it, but there was a guy that he liked to go into his garage and work on his bike. Oh yeah, you remember that one? Yes. And and the dog the would always bark at him when he would go into the garage to work on his bike, and it turned out that the dog got mad at him because the wife would like roll her eyes and be like, oh God, he's working on his fucking bike again. <laughs> and the dog picked up on that and then started taking her emotions out That's right. on him. And he just like go touch his bike pump and the dog would be like, stop it, stop it. That's right. That was That's that was such a funny episode because as it went on, you realized, they're just in a very unhappy relationship <laughs> with each other right now. <laughs> and that's maybe what you should work on first. And that's, the dog is following that that's, pattern behavior. That's why I do an assessment and evaluation. That's why I like to come to people's home, feel the energy, you know, how they talk to each other, how the kids connect to the parents, you know, and, and the dog is going to snitch right away. The dog is going to say, you know, we're dysfunctional. Uh, uh, we don't listen to each other. You know, this is the energy in this house and all of that stuff. But I always like to ask the the the, uh, the people, you know, so 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 I can see if they're really aware of what they're doing wrong. Yeah. You know, so and then when I break it down, I say, well, you know, the energy is not right. The agreement is not right. And the and the follow through is not is not good. Yeah. And most people don't really walk together as a family with the dog and that's actually the most important activity you know where the dog actually sees the the, the mom the dad the kids in front of the walk mm -hmm. and the dog becomes the follower that's where you gain the, the true leadership position yeah you just have to put yourself in that role sometimes even if you don't feel it if you have a dog a new dog you just put yourself in that role when you go out on your walk and eventually it becomes second nature and the dog will follow you but that's how the homeless do it and the handicapped people do it yep they're mm -hmm. they're being followed by their dogs yep you're on a walk the dog is lucky enough to come along with you right you, you can see it that way or, or that's your responsibility uh-huh you see what i'm saying I, I like to put it more in a responsibility i don't just have dogs i have llamas alpacas and and we all go for a pack walk i mean you know all the animals we all go together because that's how they become family otherwise the alpacas will go with alpacas. They have donkeys with the donkeys. Yeah. Only human can put different species together. Do some of your animals think that they're a different species? Or do they know? Does if, a donkey know when they're they walking? If they hang with out more with a different kind, they, they start imitating the behavior. You know, it's like dogs with humans. They go on the couch. That's not natural. Right. And they watch TV. That's not natural. You know, but that's what they see human do. And there's nothing else to do. Mm -hmm. So they imitate. A lot of, of how we learn is imitation. You right. know what I mean? A lot of a lot of what we do is imitation. Right. So as humans, we project a lot of our emotions onto our dogs. That's something that, that we naturally do. Big T uh, has has a visual demonstration that I think you'd like to get, to get into because there's two particular dogs that mean a lot of things to a lot of people uh, coming up next weekend. So do you do you know who either of these two dogs no, are? No, not yet. All right. So so on the left is Smokey. He's a blue tick hound. He's he's the mascot for the University of Tennessee. Good nose. On the right is Ugga. Uh, I believe he's an English bulldog, and he's he's the mascot for the University of Georgia. So I just wanted to to gauge just off. You you don't know either of these two dogs. No. What who who's a good dog? Maybe is one of these a bad dog? <laughs> Um, what what well, you the, think the, about the these two? The bulldog is already having a, a really strong eye contact. Is focused on it. And, and the uh, the hound. I mean, he's going to get in trouble by the from the nose, but the eye contact is really really sweet right now. So so if uh, which which of these two, just from what you've seen, would you say is the better dog? Well, they're all both. I mean, and the hands on the right handler, they're both really good, you know. But the uh, the picture in the eye contact right now, the bulldog has a fixation in the eyes, and and the coon hound. Of just a relaxed eye contact. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, the Is bulldog's there... more disciplined. The uh -huh. the hounds. He's kind of ugly nose though, might right? Distract him. Huh? The bulldog is kind of ugly though. But gets it done. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's just what you like. Smokey's such a beautiful dog though. But the nose is going to get him get in, trouble. in trouble. The nose is going to get him in trouble. Yes, it's going to make him too man. curious. The one has an amazing nose. The other one is he just uses it for breathing. 
You know what I'm saying? But what makes a dog a dog is his nose. And yeah. so that's what's going to get him in trouble. Okay. You He's know, gonna be if you too. don't control the nose, like he can pick up a pizza a mile away, takes off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he's going to get distracted. And the bulldog is going to be uh, attracted by sight. And then if you don't snap him out of him from the fixation, that's what they call bulldogs, right? So they go into a fight mode. So mm -hmm. one goes into tracking mode, the other one goes into fight mode. So you have to control the intensity of what the brain is becoming. Otherwise, you can lose them both. Got it. Have you ever met or okay. dealt with a dog that without past trauma or anything has been unfixable, has been untrainable and in, in your eyes was like, like this is- I don't really focus lot. too much on yeah. training, you know, because uh, I work with a lot of police dogs, they, mm -hmm. they, they need rehab, mm -hmm. right? So those guys are trained. So sit down, stay calm here, by work, but they can't be around children or other dogs, right? So mm -hmm. that dog can't really retire properly Mm. You know what I mean? Because they don't trust them around. So a police dog, when he retires, he needs to retire with the handler, with his family. But that guy knows that that dog hasn't been around children or other dogs. You see it? So the normal life of retirement is family with other dogs. Mm. So I help them to go back into, into a natural state of mind, you know, so they can properly retire. Now, the idea would be for a dog to never lose his natural state of mind and, and not become like just super trained. They become robots. You know, so I, I, I also work with a lot of dogs that come from war zones and they, they develop PTSD, just like a human, oh, wow. right? So you, so you can make a human soldier, but, but not a soldier human. So the transition is super important because then you want to come back and, and be with the family and just, just normal life, you know? But, but if your mind can connect to the spirit, instinct, soul, mind, heart, and then you're going to have problems being in reality. It's interesting because it, it goes along with what our friend Uncle Chaps was saying. Uncle Chaps, he was a dog trainer in the military for, for many years. He actually wanted me to ask you a question about this. Uh, he was saying that um, since you've done the show and the feedback that you've received, do you put more validity into actual emotions of dogs like fear, stress, anxiety, or even depression? Or do you still view all, pa all problems as pack related issues. And it sounds like with the PTSD, like there's, there is an element that is, you know, dogs can have mental issues that they have to deal with that aren't related to the pack. Because they live with humans who are focusing on just being a machine. Train, 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 train. It's very intellectual, right? And so normal life is you feel your spirit, you feel your instinct, you feel your heart, you know, versus just train, 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 train. You're in your mind. You don't practice emotions, mm -hmm. right? So, so that's not normal for you. That's not healthy for you, right? And so that, that's just environmental, right? Mm -hmm. And so it, for me, I just bring the dog, I, I remove the dog away from that human, I bring him to my ranch, and then that dog begins to experience a completely different energy, different philosophy, different activities. Slowly the dog recovers. So it's easier for a dog to recover because they don't have the rationality versus the human retains the past and wants to know the future. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And, and an animal is just in the moment. So the only thing you have to change is the moment. Like get, yeah, just you make them focus I mean? on. That's it, just focus on a new environment with a new philosophy and new activities, right? We take him to the beach, he's hanging out with llamas, like things that in the war zone will never happen, you know, a police dog will never do. They don't allow them to be social. Yeah. You see what I mean? So I just bring it back to like, if they were a pup, and then and just help them recover the childhood, the adolescent, and then and then 21 days later, the, the dogs are okay. I'm normal. Did you ever get in touch with the White House about Major Biden? I, many times. Did, so what happened with that? Because I wanted to fix that dog too. I was like, that, <laughs> I like that dog. It was kind of a rascal, right? Well, it was what, like what we find in about that is they don't have a safety protocol for dogs in the White House because that's not the first time a dog bites in the White House. So it's not a Republican thing. It's not a Democrat thing. It's just they don't have a safety protocol. Yeah. So the CIA, the FBI, and the Secret Service don't have a safety protocol for dogs that come and live in the White House, right? So, so I did. You know, we we send them a uh, we send them a letter and say, listen, let me somebody else can take the dog. Let me have the humans. Uh huh. You know, let me teach the humans so they can understand nose, eyes, ears, trust, respect, love, rules, and limitations. You know, um, no touch, no talk, no eye contact. All this stuff that is important to have, especially because dogs are going to come and live there. They don't know they live with the president of the United States. No, they don't. Know. They just know the energy in the environment. So that that White House does has the, the yeah. most stressful energy on earth. I would imagine, <laughs> and they end up getting rid of Major. They sent Major to a farm upstate or whatever. Right. I don't. 
I haven't seen proof of life that, of that. That's dog. not a good choice. That's not a good uh, uh, thing for us to see. No, right? Because uh, uh, we should see. Okay, let's let's all change so we can have the same agreement, same commitment, same follow through, and so we show the major is not the problem. We were the problem. So I that's agree. a good leadership. I agree. They brought in a new dog too, <laughs> and they're acting like this dog is going to be better. They got the exact same dog, it's Jeffrey, just Jeffrey, younger. Jeffrey. That's right. And okay, this one's name is Commander Biden, and it's okay. going to be totally a better dog. No, it's, it's going to the same environment as Major was in. <laughs> it's going to be pooping on the floor within like two days, just like Major was. Well, you know, what I look at is, is when the dog is walking in the White House, is the dog in front or behind, right? Or coming out of Air Force One, who's in front? The dog. So every time you see a president, you see a dog in front of the president. That's not a good look. Yeah. That's not a good look. That's not, that, it shouldn't be because people are watching that and they imitate that. Yep. You see what I'm saying? That's, that's very true. You see, nobody imitates the homeless or the handicapped people. Everybody <laughs> imitates Hollywood, Wall Street, or politicians. We can all learn from each other sometimes. It doesn't hey, matter what your job the, is or your station. Who has right? the best energy? Who has the best uh, um, connection? You know, And who has the best strategy? That's pretty much what it comes down to it. Yeah. Billy? Um, what's your opinion with uh, breed-specific behaviors in some people because as a bully breed owner there's a lot of you know dog racist people yeah who are like they're you know that dog's gonna attack somebody is that yeah. what we call it we call it dog dog racist there's yes, a lot of dog racist people racist, yeah it's, yeah. it's oh. really bad okay yeah. yeah there's but um uh with that do you believe in it like are there some dogs if there is an example that might surprise people because i for one think poodles they're hunting dogs mm -hmm. and everyone keeps them in apartments and then they go to the dog park and they're on edge and they're, you know, going after other people's dogs. And then <laughs> there's all these hypoallergenic poodle mixes, yeah. which have a little bit of that hunting dog right. in them and cause a little bit of ruckus. So in my opinion, I think poodles are a problem, but just <laughs> the, <laughs> just the, <laughs> no, the problem is always the human, right? Yeah. So, so in order for the dog to have a good social moment, they all have to practice the same rules, bound limitations. Mm. Right. So so if the, if the, regardless of the breed, so the good social behavior does not come from the breed. Breed is just a skill being bred because back in the days we needed it. Mm. But now we don't. We just need a companion. Right. And so some people like certain breeds, but you don't you don't need the skill anymore. Right. This, that dog doesn't have that job anymore. So his job now is just to wait for human. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? So what 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 we have to understand is we should not nurture bad breeding, because that's what a lot of uh, you know uh, puppy meals are shouldn't be allowed, because that's what that's what they don't pay attention to genetics. It's very few uh, breeders with good ethics because they're going to breed exactly the right state of mind. You can breed state of mind. You know what I mean? And but the rest of the people they just breed for for money. So that's why a lot of the powerful breeds. Uh, uh, when they're bred the wrong way, they can breed anxiety. They can breed uh, a game dog. You know, when a dog is going to go live in the city, we don't need that mm -hmm. anymore. You know, we never needed it, in my opinion. You know, uh, the human invented those breeds, right. and so we're responsible of making sure that we set the right rules by limitations. So I have different breeds, uh, and it's never a problem. You know, yeah. I, I rehabilitate a lot of dogs. They have fought before. You know, dog fighting and they go right back to being a dog. To me, it's animal dog breed name. So I don't really care about the breed. You know, mm -hmm. we are, as part of the animal kingdom, human race name. So when we have problems, it's not the race, it's, it's the human has a problem. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So mm -hmm. that's where you can go to a psychologist and just a cultural, you can learn some stuff. You can, you know, you can influ be influenced by certain things, but overall is is the human in you. Yeah, so I, I'm finally reaching a point where I think I'm I'm ready to get a new dog. Good. So it's been a couple years, and after a while, like it's painful, but you start to think of your dog, your old dog, and you start to be happy before you're sad. Yeah, you know, think of those memories. I finally reached that place, which is good. I'm going to be moving out of New York City in a little bit. I'm going to be getting a new dog okay. soon. You always talk about how most behaviors are correctable, but is there anything that you should look for? Like if you were looking. Uh, to get a new dog, yes. one that you were going to be adopting. Are there any behaviors that you would look for while you're getting to know them for the first time? You put them on a leash for the first time. You see them interact with other dogs for the first time. Any behaviors that you think are more desirable than others? I always pick middle of the pack dogs. So all my dogs that, that I bring into my life, they're middle of the pack. They're, they're born natural, happy-go-lucky. You know, so there's three positions in, in a litter. Front of the pack, that's the one they call it uh, pick of the litter. And then middle of the pack, that's what people call uh, uh, pet quality. And then the back of the pack is r the run of the litter. 
right? So mm -hmm. there's three positions in, in the pack. And it doesn't matter what breed it is. So you go into a litter mix and you're going to see front, middle, back. So the middle uh, is the HR of the pack. So they're just naturally happy-go-lucky. It doesn't matter what breed they are. They're always going to do That's why all my pit bulls are happy-go-lucky. Okay. Mm. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I get yeah. that. I get so that. you can have a, a Mastiff, a Border Collie. The front of the pack, uh, they're more for protection direction. So in a litter of uh, German Shepherds, only one of that litter can be a police officer. The other ones are pet quality. You see what uh -huh. I mean? Yeah, so only one can go to the Westminster. In a litter of, you know, a whole bunch of beagles, only one can go. The other ones are pet quality. Yeah, interesting. Now, yeah. what what about the runts? Because my dog was the smallest of the litter. Yeah. And what what are their qualities relative? To alert. That? They're the back. They're the most sensitive of all, uh -huh. right? So their job is to to alert the pack about things. That's why uh, the sensitivity. If if they're not in the right home, they can go into fear, insecurity, uncertainty. They're shy. You know what I mean? So those those are those are the most sensitive of the pack. So. Three, three state of mind that I teach people. Calm, surrender, happy-go-lucky, calm, confident. Calm, surrender is your mo superpower. That's where you're the most sensitive of all. That's when you can do the assessment and evaluation. Happy-go-lucky, you're celebrating something. Calm, confident is when you're giving direction protection to something. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So the back of the pack are the masters of calm, surrender. The middle are the master of happy-go-lucky and the front are the master of calm, confident. But only human can play the three positions. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. You see it? Yeah, yeah. In a pack of dogs, the back of the pack can never play the front. And if he does, he's going to be a fear biter. Yeah. He's just, he's put into that position. He's not confident. No, he wasn't there. born for it. He's not wired for it. Yeah. He's wired to be in the back. And there's yeah. nothing wrong with it. There's two extremely happy. They're super. That's what you need the back, the middle, and the front. And then you have a complete pack. That makes sense. So I, I want to talk about the Halo yes. color that you have here. So you co founded this, it's a yeah. GPS dog safety system and the only wireless fence that keeps your dog protected everywhere they go, in the yard, at the beach, at the park, or on a hike. Anyway. Don't take your dogs to fireworks displays. <laughs> I always, we always like to remind people on this show, if you have like a new dog, don't take it to the 4th of July. Not a good place for dogs. But um, you want to tell us like what this what this dog collar does that's different? Because you say 4th of July, the whole world is going to stay in the 4th of July. So <laughs> guys, so, uh, just desensitize your dog before 4th of July means uh, uh, when the dog is happy, play 4th of July sounds. Yeah. You know, when the dog is eating and he's content, he's relaxed, play for the job. That's called desensitizing. Get them to love fireworks. Get, that's right. Get <laughs> him to identify the sound of firework with happiness or calmness. That's a good idea. Okay. So we got that do out that of the way. You should do that before, like right now, so they have time to start getting acclimated to liking fireworks. Yeah. Don't start working for the July yeah. a week before. Right. That, that requires, especially with back of the pack dogs. Mm -hmm. You said those are the ones that suffer the most. Okay. So. <laughs> Uh, and that's when most dogs actually get lost. And that's one of the reasons we invented Halo because, you know, first of all, it has a GPS, so you know where your dog is all the time. So when I come in, I come in, okay, this is what people need when they're not home. They need something that reminds a dog the rules, the boundaries, the limitations, right? So literally the future is here, right? And then when you go outside, what you need help with is how do I walk my dog when I play with my dog? You know, what's the rules, boundaries, limitations, and explore, follow, play, explore. So once you have a tool or technology that reminds the dog to stay super grounded, super primal, and, and it allows the connection with you, you're gonna have the freedom that the, that the homeless people have and the people with disabilities have is that, that, that natural connection of trust, respect, love. And that was very important to me. And especially, you know, you will always know what your dog is. Awesome. Yeah, check it out. Uh, it's the Halo Collar and you can find it. Where can they find it? Online? What's the, you got a website Online. for it here? And it's got the app that goes along with it, so you can you can use Caesar's training techniques oh, on your dog. Please follow the instructions; it's super important. Yes, follow the instructions absolutely, and you can see Caesar on uh, Better Human, Better Dog on National Geographic. That's right, Thank and Disney you. Plus soon. And wh which one? Disney Plus. Soon. Disney Plus. Yes. Check them out, and also just if you want to just ever binge watch the old episodes of Dog Whisper, it's great. Television. Do it. <laughs> it's great television. Oh. So, um, did you have any more questions, Billy? Got a couple. Okay. okay. Uh, Maybe just one or two, but uh, there's a lot of people, you know, a lot of people got new dogs because of the pandemic. Yeah. They're going to the dog parks and they're getting into situations that they don't, you know, aren't quite prepared for. So right. let's say there is like a dog fight or a dog attack. Yes. What steps would you take to break it up in sort of the, the best way possible if you, someone's in that uh, situation? First of all, I like to address the part where those dogs that were adopted during the pandemic were there before the pandemic. Right. Mm. So uh, these people went and adopted a dog because they were bored. 
mm. right? And they always had it in mind, but they never followed through, right? So, so it's an emotional and it's also selfish, right? And so with that in mind, you have to understand that a dog is already sensing that you're not coming with the right knowledge, right? So that means you're not ready. Right. So, OK, so now now, you know, you're not ready because I like people to take full responsibility of their actions because the dog doesn't rationalize. So you can never blame a dog. Right. And then once you go into the dog park, um, I think it's, it's very important that you learn to assess and evaluate what energy is in the dog park. Just I have two kids. And before I actually send them to preschool, I went and assess and evaluate what's the energy in the preschool. You see what I mean? Don't just throw the kid into this preschool or, or don't just throw a dog into a dog park, not knowing what the energy is. Are those humans talk to each other? Because a lot of times where people go to the dog park, they go on their phone or their coffee and the dogs are unsupervised. You see what I'm yeah. saying? So you have to see that because that's the environment you're bringing your dog in. So that way you're not do 50-50, maybe yes, maybe not. You're gambling the dog life. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So, it's, so you're making sure that you, uh, you, number one, you assess and evaluate the place. And, and dog parks have like different, uh, energy uh, times because the people in the morning are for the most part very responsible right uh, and then you got the 10 a.m which is dog, uh, the dog walkers they come you throw all the yeah. dogs there then you got the 12 the people that are really responsible because they'd rather go to take the dog to the dog park than they have lunch right and then you got the four those are tired they're just tired, they feel guilty, and they just throw the dog there. Yep. So I understand that it, that it has like a certain level of energy that the that the people actually practice. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And of course, the, the idea will be that everybody in the dog park understand the same rules and limitations. They understand which dog is compatible to each other. And all the humans should talk to each other. Don't, mm -hmm. don't stay away from each other. Because then the dog observes, ah, oh, we're here to stay away from each other. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Yeah. And, and if you, and some people are, uh, like you say, some people, if you bring a Rottweiler in it, immediately people get tense just because he's a Rottweiler. Or you bring a Mastiff, or if you bring a Pitbull, you, and then that at the moment you see the shift, remove the dog away from there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I don't even bring my dog. He's an American Bulldog, and tons of smaller dogs and different dogs just don't like him when he walks in. He's not dog aggressive. But just dogs that don't know him, like even walking on the street, they start barking at him. Mm -hmm. He, I've trained him well just to like uh, maintain, uh, what, what were we talking about? Ignore. Ignore, yeah. maintain attention. Um, and I think it's because a lot of irresponsible owners. But one thing he does struggle with, skateboarders. I, he, that's one of those things. Squirrels and skateboarders, have them on the leash, have a good control of them. But when they come out, he tries to jump and dart at them. Oh, so he has braid ride. Yeah. Okay. So I, I've tried to distract him from him. I always correct him. Well, what what tool that. are you using? What what tool? Is uh, it chain? I got, yeah, I got a, a pinch collar. Okay. So if you can switch it, but see, a pinch with excitement irritates. Mm -hmm. So if you can put a halter, mm -hmm. like the one for the horses, yeah. that actually sends them into more following. They're looking around because your dog is a scouting. Mm -hmm. You see, that means his eyes are moving. Right, so that's mm -hmm. that's you know, and and that's why he's paying attention to the to the skateboard or the squirrel. So that means his brain is like this, even mm -hmm. if he's walking. You know, so watch. The, that's what I was watching the dog's eyes. You know, it's a picture. So the the, the best read you can have is the eyes, mm -hmm. right? Or 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 maybe the ears if the mouth is open. But in this case, the eyes were telling how the dogs were feeling at that moment, right? So mm -hmm. when a dog goes after squirrels or skateboard, that means the prey drive is open, huh? Right. And that, that's what you're having problems. So if you put the halter, you're going to redirect the dog to focus on the halter. Hmm. And so, so and then you can start bringing skateboards once the dog is totally focused and or, or passing by squirrels. and, and, and you, you pick a, But start with the skateboard because once you achieve the skateboard, it's just, you can ask him for the same behavior towards the squirrel. Okay. Yeah. That's when you can control the squirrels you can. The thing is, you I never see skateboarders that much, but when it happens, yeah. But when you bring your friends, yeah. yes, that, that's what you have yeah. to do. That, you know, a, a rehabilitation is like a movie, mm -hmm. right? You have to create the scenario and then control it. Mm -hmm. That's why I have the ranch, so I can okay. What you dog? My dog is afraid. Of, okay, let me let's bring some ducks or let's bring some chickens or let's bring something else that's going to trigger the same thing, but I'm in control. Mm -hmm. You see it, and so that that way we help the dog, we help the dog, and then the the human gets comfortable, understands, and then he goes practice in the real case scenario. 
Hmm. Yeah. Billy, it sounds like you need cooler friends that skateboard. <laughs> That's what it sounds like to me. You, need, you don't you don't have any friends that are just sick with it. No, it's like you, you socialize your dog, you train your dog, and then one day a skateboarder comes by and you're just like, didn't predict that was going to happen. Well, go to Venice Beach. Beach. It's yeah. full of it. Yeah. 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 You, need, you need cooler friends, Billy. That's the yeah. issue, I think. You know, you know when I when I, I do a lot, of, a lot of, especially Border Collies, because they were bred for herding, right? Mm-hmm. And so I, uh, as the moment they said my dog attacks a, a skateboarder, so let's go to Venice Beach. Yeah. And I put it right in it right away. You hmm. know what I mean? To me, the way out is the way in. So I just faced the bull, you know, grabbed the bull by the horn and, and that's it. And, and so the dog is super comfortable right away. Then the human does it and that's it. Hmm. Very cool. Yeah. All right. We're going to awesome. let you go. Thank you for stopping yes. by. I, I have one last, last question. Go ahead. Who's the best dog of all time? What is the best dog? <sighs> I have to say mine because I, I, you know, I knew him for 16 years. Daddy. Daddy, yeah, Daddy's a legend. We changed the world together, you know. I mean, we went all over the world, and 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 people were afraid of pit bulls at that time, and and people fell in love with Daddy. I mean, everywhere I go, how's Daddy? You know, when I told him they passed away, everybody started crying. Yeah. So literally, wow. you know, to me, last year reading thing changed my life, and Daddy practically changed the world's life. You know? That is that's a very cool thing to think about. Like it's he made a tangible impact <laughs> on how dogs. Like my personal dog Leroy was trained in the way because. I saw you on television working with your dogs. That, and, can and, I tell you a story before yeah, Daddy sure. passed away? You guys are going to love this. So this is how cool this dog mm-hmm. was. So here I am. Daddy's 16. You know, you can see he's he's about to go. And and I'm working with this dog that is trained to find cell phones in jail. Right. And the dog developed fear to people. So the guy called me, says, he's all right. It's nothing I can do. I don't know anything about, you know, rehabilitation. So please help me. So I go in and the dog is completely shut down under a table. So the worst thing you can do is pull them or carry them, right? And say, then I say, it's only one that can, if it's going to make it happen, it's only one, right? And that is in my RV and he's like ready to come out, okay? He's like, he sensed that I needed him. I went and opened the door. He came out like a puppy and, and he went, he's never been there. He went and looked for the dog, touched the dog nose, the dog got up, follow it, and take him to the RV. That's the kind of, that's like, wow. that's the thing that, that's what I'm saying. Like I seen this dog taking, you know, bites from another dog, he just takes it. Yeah. He just, he, it's a pit, you know, he's big, big guy. Never retaliates, he just stayed right there. And then once the dog stopped, he went and lick him. <laughs> yeah. Talk about it, like it literally like. D- don't you feel that the bully, the bully breeds are sort of a little more like of emotion, not emotional dog, but have better emotional uh, like connection with people and other dogs in a way? Well, they were not bred to go after humans. Right. Yeah. But they have like, just like a better, I don't know, I just feel like they're more, uh, they show happiness, they're happier dogs, but. Well, it, you know, there is two kinds of dogs is, well, three, I guess, is the spiritual dogs, you know, as the, just the dog dog junior. And then it's the emotional one, right? And so right now my spiritual uh, dog is is a uh, is a Frenchie. Oh, yeah. I name him Bison because my spiritual animal is a is a buffalo. And so this guy knows exactly how I feel, hmm. way before anything. So I, as he comes to me, he looks at me, so just like Daddy. And then you got the dog, dog. You know, just mm. just a regular dog. He loves the beach. He loves everything. Daddy didn't like the beach whatsoever. He just make a big hole in the beach, like, <laughs> like a seal, and that was it. That was him going to the beach. But mm-hmm. Junior, wow, he was a surfer. Yeah, you know. So so in a way, Junior was uh, way more fun when it came to it. But the one that was way more deeper, it was Daddy. Yeah. yeah. And so you got the deep ones, you got the, the 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 spiritual one, and then you got the loving ones. But they're all, you know, they're all great. That's great. Yeah, that's, that's, awesome. that's that's a great answer. And I also love it when people name their dogs after other animals. Yeah. Like whether there's a dog named Bear or Oso or something like that. That's always fun. Yeah. All right. So Caesar Milan, check him out. Better Human, Better Dog on National Geographic and co-founder of the Halo Collar. Thank you for coming in. The future is here. Really appreciate it. Caesar was brought to you by Shady Rays. I love Shady Rays. They are the official sunglasses of me, the official sunglasses of Billy, the official sunglasses of Big T and everybody else on macro dosing. We love Shady Rays. Their sunglasses offer an industry best combination of fit style and performance without the big brand price tag. It doesn't stop at the quality because Shady Rays offers the most insane protection program in all of eyewear. Every pair is backed by lost and broken replacements. If you lose or if you break your pair, even on day one, they will send you a brand new pair. Wear with confidence because Shady Rays has your back long after you purchase. If you don't love them, 
exchange for a new pair, or you can return them for free within 30 days. There's absolutely no risk when you shop with Shady Rays. Their team always has your back. Best deal of the year. If you're wondering, if you thought to yourself, maybe I'll get Shady Rays, maybe I'll get it, maybe I'll put it off a couple months. Um, get them now because 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. That is the best deal of the year. Go to ShadyRays.com, use code MACRO, get 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. That is 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses with Shady Rays. Um, all right, so that does it for macro dosing for today. I love you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Did we want to do any any voicemails, or should we wait until wait? Let's do we, wait. Do you want to talk about Neuralink? Yeah, we could save that. But I do think we should give a good luck to the balls this weekend. It's a big one. Even though Caesar <laughs> picked so, the bulldogs. So I thought about that. I th- at first I thought it was not good, but now I think it actually is because what he was saying is Smokey's will to hunt. Like, it's a hunting dog. He's going to be running all over the place. He wants to be doing something. That fat, lazy fuck, Ugga, is just laying in his <laughs> air-conditioned doghouse. So he's like, yeah, that's a good dog. He's not going to give you any trouble. He's saying Smokey is is getting after it. He's hungry. He was, he was distracted, though. He's maybe reading his press clippings. I don't think so. I think his eye is on the prize. He's ready to go. He's and saying that, it smells like 98. Could. Yeah. Last does time it, we were number one. Does it feel like 98? Oh, my God. I just guess found, we'll find out. Yeah. Um, I don't know what Billy just found out. I just saw a video of Hasbulla next to Liver King yeah, saying, I, I saw that. I'd rather take a photo with the dog. Yeah. <laughs> what? Dude, Hasbulla. I'm afraid of Hasbulla. I didn't know. Mental alpha. All right. We'll see you guys on Monday. Arian, are you playing golf this weekend? I've been playing golf every day for the last like month, honestly. How, how close are you to breaking 80? Uh, I would say in the next... Two months, I can break eighty. Damn! All right, we we got to get you featured in some golf content then. We got it. So I'm playing Tory Pines. We're gonna see what um in the next week and a half, two weeks. I'm playing Tory Pines. So we're gonna see if we can finagle some kind of content out of that. That would be lit. All right, sounds good. All right, love you guys. Bye. <laughs>